And with that, the Expo stayed alive. The flight home seemed endless. Now the final homestand of the season has arrived with the near unbeatable Kurt Schilling on the mound. But the Phillies must face the ancient Marlin. Knuckleballer Charlie Huff cast in the role of the spoiler next. of the 1996 All-Star Game, the Phillies tonight look to defeat the Florida Marlins. Hi again, everybody. I'm Larry Rose, and that is correct. Just announced the Phillies will host the 1996 All-Star Game and hope they have a little placard out in center field to celebrate a 1993 divisional championship. To do it, they'll have to beat these Florida Marlins a couple of times over the course of the next three nights. News for you, Mariano Duncan has decided not to appeal his suspension, so he will not be in the lineup tonight. The lineup will be all left-handed except for Kurt Schilling. In terms of the pitching matchup, Schilling has emerged as the ace. He's looking for his seventh consecutive win. He has not lost the game since back on the 7th of July against the veteran Charlie Huff at age 45 looking for career win number 212 and stay with us coming up with their thoughts on tonight's game Jay Johnstone Chris Wheeler right after this thrill the spirit the excitement the pride. The officially licensed team rings from Balfour. Each ring is crafted to the exacting standards of each league, and all are made in America of beautiful Balfour Celestrium for the look and feel of real gold or silver. Handcrafted by the same master jewelers who created league championship rings and trophies for decades. When you call to order, We'll send you a picture of your ring and a sizer to ensure your team ring fits perfectly. So call the number on your screen to order your team ring. There's no payment required now. You'll be billed just $19 prior to the shipment of your ring. Then, four more monthly payments of only $19 each. Enjoy years of showing your team pride right at hand. Call 1-800-438-6262, 1-800-438-6262. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Veteran Stadium. Chris Wheeler with Jay Johnstone. Phillies and the Marlins. 13 to go, a four-game lead. Should the Phillies be looking over their shoulders? Well, I would hope not, Chris. Uh, all the Phillies have to do is go out and play their game and win. Uh, they shouldn't be concerned about the Expos. They should just go out and concentrate one day at a time and concentrate on winning because if the Phillies win, there's nothing the Expos can do. I was a little disheartened by the way the Phillies played in Montreal, as I'm sure some fans were. Uh, and I think the Phillies have to re-examine a little bit uh, what they're doing on the field. Uh, they, uh, they didn't play Philly baseball, uh, even though it was uh, the crowd was very intimidating. But the Phillies, all they have to do really is just go out and play like they're supposed to win and the heck with Montreal. Good matchup tonight. Kurt Schilling and the ancient one, Charlie Hopp. We'll be back with the starting lineups coming up right after this. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers. The only beer with a taste as genuine as the people who drink it. Nothing beats a bud. By Mellon PSFS, the official bank of the Phillies. By Bella Pennsylvania Yellow Pages, no other book can match it, a Bell Atlantic company. By Texaco, save up to $5 by joining Texaco's frequent fueler club. Visit your local participating Texaco location for all the details. Texaco, star of the American road. By Coca-Cola, Phillies baseball and Coca-Cola, always a hit, always Coca-Cola. By Cento Fine Italian Food, the company that says trust your family with our family. By Jiffy Lube, America's favorite oil change. And by Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield Personal Choice, the health plan that controls costs, not people.
sunshine this afternoon, a high close to yesterday's 96 downtown. Texaco Food Marts really have everything? Oh, they have gum, cheese, candy. Many reasons I come to Texaco. Chips, cereals, nice people. There are many, 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 many reasons. You want it, they got it. If they don't have it, you don't need it. Isn't that candy that pulls apart like that? Did I skip something? Visit your Texaco station and Food Mart for unbeatable System 3 gasoline. Pop comes here for System 3, and I come here for Pop. Right, Mom? And just about everything else. I'd recommend it to anybody, and I would too. Always a first time. Yes. Hello. All right, we are on the air right now and back here at Veterans Stadium. Chris Wheeler with Jay Johnston. We apologize for some audio problems we were having. You saw Chuck Carr strike out on a fastball away. And this is Brett Barbary, the second baseman, a switch hitter, batting at 315 right-handed, 270 from the left side. Hey, it's nice to be back on the air. It's nice to be back in quiet Veterans Stadium. Yes. <laughs> I understand you guys uh, were intimidated a little by that crowd up in Montreal. I did catch some of it on I'll the news. I'll tell you, it was unbelievable. That was a, an amazing weekend up there. Three great games, Jay, and all of them decided on the last, last pitch. Here's the lineup for the Montreal Expos. Carr, Barbary, Conine, Destrade, Arias, and Nadal, and Whitmore, Weiss, and the ancient Mariner, Charlie Huff, on the mound. Rene Latchman, the manager. Schilling's pitch is outside. Schilling starting the game with a strikeout. He begins the game six in the league in strikeouts with 163. And there are the overall numbers on Kurt Schilling, making start number 32 tonight. Barbary takes a strike three call on the outside corner. He didn't like it. Terry Tater rings him up, so Schilling comes out and gets two straight strikeouts. Well, Terry Tata might have a little bigger plate than the Marlins are used to. This one ball moving away, as you can see. Great pitch by Schilling. Same pitch as Chuck Carr looked at. Good running fastball on the outside corner at the knees. Here's Jeff Conine having a good year at 298. The only negative for him, third in the league in strikeouts with 125. And Schilling bounces a breaking ball up there. Here's the Phillies defense tonight. Eisenreich, Dykstra, Thompson in the outfield. Stocker. Morandini, Kruk, and Hollins on the infield. Dalton behind the plate, and of course, Kurt Schick. Schilling, dirty Kurt, on the mound. And a one ball, no strike count. And the pitch is a fastball right down the middle. Rest is Destrada on deck, and a switch hitter. Florida comes into game 62 and 87. Pretty good expansion year for them. 34 38 at home, 28 and 49 away from Joe Robbie. Tries to check on a fastball and can't. And it's one and two. The home plate umpire, we mentioned him, Terry Tata. Eric Gregg is at first base. Greg Bona at second and at third base is Jerry Davis. And once again, we'd like to apologize for the audio problems we had at the beginning of the telecast. And everything is fine just now. Good pitch by Schilling, fouled off by Jeff Conine, formerly in the Kansas City Royals organization, a first baseman who's played left field all year. 
had a few games at first, but for the most part, he's been their left fielder. He's done a great job. Uh, Renee Latchman had a lot to say about this young kid. They did not expect this kind of a year out of a guy that was normally a first baseman. And he's been in every and game, he, as you see. He's moved him out, out to the outfield. So they're very happy with his numbers. And uh, I had a great chat with him, and we'll go into that as the course of the game goes on. Kind of brisk here tonight, isn't it? Feels good. Popped up foul back into the crowd behind home plate. Kurt Schilling, six foot four, 215 pounds, as we look at the crowd here at the vet. Schill is 26 years of age. He'll be 27 on November the 14th. Originally selected number two by the Boston Red Sox in January of 1986. You know about him going to Baltimore and to Houston, and then here for Jason Grimsley. The 2 2 pitch to Conai. Low, 3 and 2. And Terry Tata will check out the baseball, rub it up. And toss it out. Conine told me, he said, you know, I kind of had a feeling I was going to have a good year when I was very nervous opening day and the Dodgers were in town. I went four for four. Yeah, he had a big game. That set a record, tied Lou Pinell of Kansas City for rookies on opening days. And since then, he's done a good year. High fastball popped up, playable right side. Crock and foul territory there. John grabs it, and the Marlins go in order in the first. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. One half gone, no score. Time is running out on Ford's factory authorized clearance. Save up to $2,900 with a double bonus discount on Ford Aerostar. Save $1,300 on the number one selling Ford F-150. Or save $1,900 on the hot looking Ford Ranger. Five of the top ten sellers. See your Quality Plus Ford dealer and get your best clearance deal today. Number one in America. Hurry, Ford's factory authorized clearance ends soon. Hi, I'm Neil Hartman. Budweiser and the Phillies want to send you and a guest to the World Series. Right now, be the eighth caller to 1-800-432-1745, and you'll win a Budweiser sports bag and a replica Phillies cap. All winners then qualify for the grand prize, an all-expense-paid trip to the first two games of the World Series in the host American League City. So call now and pack your bags, because with a little luck, you could be on your way to the first two games of the World Series, compliments of Budweiser. And back here at Veteran Stadium, here's your Sherwin-Williams starting lineup tonight for Jim Fergosi's Phillies. Lenny Dykstra in center, Mickey Morandini at second, Mariano Duncan beginning the first of a three-game suspension tonight. John Cruck, Dave Hollins, Darren Dalton, Jim Eisenreich in left. Actually, he's in right, Milt Thompson in left. Kevin Stocker, the shortstop, and on the mound for the Phillies tonight is Kurt Schilling. And for Renee Latchman's team is Jeff Conine the left Chuck Carr in center Daryl Whitmore and right Alex Aries at third Walt Weiss at short Brett Barbary at second Orestes Destrada will be at first Bob Nadel first time he'll be catching Charlie Huff on the mound and from the ancient tombs of Egypt the old one himself Charlie Huff there he is what a character Charlie Huff six foot two 190 pounder makes his home now in Brea California 45 years of age signed to an Edmonton contract back in December of last year made the ball club out of spring training and has had a pretty good year, 9 and 15, 4 2 4 ERA. Charlie now with 211 lifetime wins against 206 losses. Lenny Dykstra leads it off at 305, and the knuckleballer starts him with what else? <laughs> a knuckleball to a guy, Bob Nato, who is catching a knuckleball pitcher for the first yes. time in his career, minors or majors. Be very interesting tonight. Marlins lead the National League in pass balls. Base set, Lenny Dykstra. Fielded by Darrell Whitmore on one hop as Charlie Huff got a knuckleball up. So Lenny is on. He is now batted safely in 16 out of his last 17 ball games. As we said, Charlie Huff primarily throws the knuckleball about 95% of the time. The only time he got a chance maybe to look for something else is 3 0. But when a knuckleball hangs, it makes it very inviting to hit. As we see Lenny, the top of the run leaders in the National League. You know, this should be a, a great guy for Dykstra to steal on too, Chris, because with the knuckleballer coming in there floating at a slower pace, and of course, Nadal really not sure of where the ball's going to go. And I'm sure he's thinking just that, what Jay's talking about. And Huff has a good move to first, as all knuckleballers do, because they have to be aware of base runners. Lenny has scored. 135 runs as Jay just said that's tops in the majors that was hit number 181 for Lenny which leads the National League. 
Mickey Morandini the batter and the pitch Dykstra doesn't go and it's a knuckleball over for a strike. Mickey hasn't started a game since September 11th against Houston. As we mentioned uh, as we look at the third baseman Arias up. Uh, Mariano Duncan who is red hot unfortunately has to sit out three tonight because of that altercation with Frank Castillo a couple weeks ago. So Duncan not available for three days. There goes Dykstra and a rip job the right center cut off nicely by Chuck Carr. Dykstra will be held at third. The throw comes into the middle of the infield and there goes Morandini to second. Good hustle by Mickey Morandini on the play after Carr had made a fine play cutting the ball off. You know, Renee Lashman mentioned uh, today about Chuck Carr, who has been a big surprise, and he also mentioned the fact that the Marlins would have given up a lot more runs on their pitching staff had not Carr made some of the fine plays. Here he cuts a ball off that really should have gone to the wall because Carr has great speed. Unfortunately, the throw was not near a cutoff man. And Morandini with heads up base running was able to go to second base. But Carr has played an outstanding center field for the Marlins this year and really turned the tables on a lot of base hits that would have fallen into outs. And they're going to give him a single second on the throw no error on the play. So the Phillies have runners at second and third nobody out for John Cruck. And there are the numbers on Cruck who does not particularly like to hit off knuckleballers. But then again who does. There's a knuckleball and Nadal fights a little bit but holds on to it. Cruck lifetime off Charlie Hupp three for eight with a run batted in. Cruck has very good numbers against this Florida ball club. Knuckleball almost hits him. He's got that helmet just the way he likes it now. <laughs> he wants to go up there and grab a little pine tar every now and then when he loses it off his gloves. Knuckle ball misses low. John's hitting 429 against the Marlins this year. He's eighth in the league in hitting with the 313 average. And of course, he's walked 106 times, which is good for fourth in the National League. Two balls and a strike. The infield back in the middle up at the corners. And Crux swings through a knuckleball. Two and two on deck is Hollins. So the Phillies trying to strike quickly here. Happy birthday tonight to darling Mary Liberi. As you look at Crux numbers in scoring position, she's a sister of the great Spanky, who works for the city of Philadelphia, helping maintain veteran stadium. So happy birthday to you, Mary. Here's the pitch to Crux. Knuckleball hit to Destrade. Dykstra's coming home. Now they got him in a rundown, and this is not going to work out very well. There was a lot of confusion then about whether he was going on contact or not with nobody out, and he kind of got hung up and then didn't stay in the rundown long enough for the uh, for Morandini to get the third. Well, surprisingly enough, Dykstra could have gone back to third, but you, like you said, he stopped because when Destrade got the ball home, Nadal looked at first, but then Lenny kept coming. So you're right in this situation. Now, now you got to get yourself into a little bit of a rundown and maybe give Morandini time to get the third. So not a good trade three two five and Dave Hollins who bats right handed against Huff is going to do it again tonight. He's done this earlier and had some success against him. So Hollins a switch hitter will bat right handed against the knuckleballer Charlie Huff. Hollins at three twenty two. Yeah that's a play where if you're not going on contact you just stay at third and you still mm -hmm. have second and third and one out so something got messed up there. Yeah with nobody out. And it's right at the first baseman. Then you want to stay there. Because they were playing up at the corners, as mm -hmm. we had mentioned. Pitch to Hollins is low. Ball one. On deck is Dalton. <laughs> Gary Maddox <laughs> just entered the booth. <laughs> On a two-step, we're doing the line dance. I haven't figured out what that step was. I think he tripped. He was a lot more graceful when he played. <laughs> Nadal wasn't sure whether he caught that one or not. It's two and zero. Oh. You know, for a guy that hasn't caught enough of a baller in a game, and with runners at second and third, he did pretty good. And watch this play right here. The knuckleball by Huff goes outside and just drops down, and he really stayed with that one. That's, that's a tough play when you you know the pressure's on. You got some runners in scoring position. There's another knuckleball over two and one. And as I said, the Marlins lead the National League in pass balls with 25. Phillies have 10. 
Mickey Morandini still at second base. And over at first on the fielder's choice is Kruk. And Hollins fouls one away right side now to play. Marcel Latchman, the pitching coach and brother of manager Rene Latchman, said that Huff has probably been their most consistent pitcher all year long. He's been the victim of a team not scoring a lot of runs for him. Been been pitching when the team has been shut out uh, three times or four times. So Marlins have not got a whole lot of runs for Charlie Huff when he's been out there. But uh, he's a gamer. And at 45 years old. You gotta you gotta really be amazed at a guy that can continue to do a job as Charlie can. All three and another nice play by Nadal as the ball's in the dirt. Looked like a slider, wasn't it? A little off speed. That wasn't a knuckleball. He throws him once in a while. Yeah, Not too often, but he will throw a breaking ball once in a while. Just watch this, the movement on this pitch. No, uh, knuckleball. Yeah, it was a knuckleball. It just had a funny spin on it, that's all. Three balls and two strikes now to Hollins. Here's a pitch. Knuckleball floats in there high, and Dave with a good eye takes it. So the Phillies have loaded them for Darren Dalton. Yeah, that's the difference between this ball club that's very patient and knows the strike zone or a young inexperienced ball club or guys that like to swing at anything they would have hacked at that pitch they'd have gone after him. but this ball club has guys that know the strike zone are very capable of taking up to two strikes and they'll make up pitch Darren Dalton is tied for fourth in the league and runs batted in with Barry Bonds 103 look at Justice and Gannon they have jumped to the top of the class after Bonds led all year and Matt Williams has gone ahead of his teammate. So Dalton with a chance to knock in some here. Phillies trying to get on top in this game. And the pitch to him is low and inside, ball one. Dalton this year off Charlie Huff is 0 for 4 thus far. Huff is 1 and 1 in three starts against the Phillies with a 5 2 9 earned run average. He won his last start against the Phillies back in August in Florida. Had a no decision here, and the Phillies beat him at Joe Robbie Stadium early back in May. Dalton pops it up. Playable in the infield. Infield fly rule. Second baseman Barbary squeezes it. And there are two outs here in the first inning. But now it'll take a hit. Phillies with a big shot to get something early here and so far haven't been able to do it off Huff. Location by Huff was a knuckleball and it was right down the center, but it stayed up. You can see kind of the uppercut swing by Dalton. I think Darren thought the ball was going to go down maybe a little more and the ball kind of floated above the belt there and just stayed there. Now Jim Eisenreich is 12 for 35 lifetime 343 off Charlie Huff and he has the bases loaded now and two outs in the first inning. And there's no score. And Eisenreich takes a knuckler over for a strike. Huff lifetime against the Phillies is two and four in 34 games three of them starts. There you see the numbers on Eisenreich with runners in scoring position. Chases a knuckleball, it's 0-2. So Charlie Huff is coming back in this inning after the Phillies had second and third, nobody out. Huff gets out of this inning. You can tell the difference in the first two batters versus the last two. He didn't have control of the ball. The ball was floating up, not moving a lot. And now against Dalton and Eisenreich, the ball really moves. Boy, what a big hit by Eisenreich. One run scores. Here comes Kruk. He scores. Over to third goes Hollins. And Jim Eisenreich, who has been unbelievable this year, gives the Phillies a huge lift right out of the shoot, Jay, and knocks in two with two outs. Well, all year long, the Phillies have come up with a big two out in. If it hasn't been Dalton, it's been Dykstra or Kruk or Duncan and Eisenreich. We're in Cavillia here. Eisenreich picks up his catcher and teammate, Darren Dalton. On a two strike count on a knuckleball breaking down he makes it look so simple see the ball and hit it big two out hit and Hollins there at third and there is Eisenreich and he continues to hit Charlie Huff we gave you those numbers on him he now has 13 lifetime hits off Huff here's Thompson milk playing in left field tonight he didn't Cavill you're not ready to go and won't be for a while pitch to Mill a knuckleball outside ball one. Kavia trying to do some running in the outfield before the game as you look at Hollins at third. And it's just not ready to go. And uh, it's still going to be maybe a week. I think Inky would like to play by the weekend. We'll see. One ball, no strikes to Mill. 
high chopper. Estrade right there grabs it, steps on the bag, and that'll do it. But the Phillies jump on top in the first inning. They pick up two runs. They do it with three hits. There are no errors. They leave two. Two nothing fills after one. Do you want your car done right? If you want your car done right, bring it to a place that puts its money where its mouth is. Bring it to Jiffy Lube, where millions of cars every year are covered by our pledge of satisfaction. Everybody says they'll do the job right, but at Jiffy Lube, we guarantee it. One more reason, Jiffy Lube is America's favorite oil change. We got experience at Jiffy Lube. When Bob borrowed a lawnmower, all he got was short grass. When Bob borrowed hedge clippers, all he got was nice shrubs. When Bob borrowed a ladder, all he got was red shutters. When Bob borrowed a hose, all he got was wet. But when Bob borrowed money, he got indispensable banking services. The Mellon PSFS smart accounts. The package accounts for people who borrow as well as save. Inky, Izzy, The Wild Thing, Batty, Dutch, Dude, The Crocker, and Friends. Request the pleasure of your company at Veterans Stadium in 1994. Season ticket plans range from full season to as few as 13 games. For more information, call 463-5000. Hey, everybody, if you like Italian food, I know you're going to love Cento. And another big reason that you got to have Cento products in your home is because of the fact that every time the Phillies hit a home run, which has been 151 times this year already, they've donated $200 to the Philadelphia Child Guidance Clinic. $30,200 already on behalf of Cento. Restes Destrade cannot hold up and swings and misses. Destrade having a good year. 20 home runs, 81 runs batted, and those numbers lead the Florida ball club and they had hoped he would supply some power for them and he has he's a switch hitter a native of Cuba and he spent some time playing in Japan is now that's back over here and that's done well. what I was going to say coming from Japan nobody really knew what he was going to do it's kind of like Cecil Fielder and he has been all they've expected and more as Latchman said today so big big surprise for the Florida Marlins actually a lot of people thought that this team was uh, wasn't that good, but you know, you start looking at uh, at some of the years that these guys are having. It's unfortunately they just don't score a lot of runs. Breaking ball and it misses a little low, three and one. Well, they they've won 62 games as you look at Brene Latchman. Yeah, but they played 49, no 59 one-run games and have lost 35 of them. So that's. They don't score a lot of runs. In fact, if you look at all the runs scored the entire year, they've scored 549 as a team. Phillies, 277 more. To give an example, they have 826 on the year. So, big difference in why the Marlins have all those one run losses. They just don't score enough runs. Think where they'd be without Brian Harvey. Swing and a miss. Struck him out on a high fastball. Strikeout number three for Schilling already. One out here in the second inning. Good pitch by Schilling going right up the ladder. You can see that pitch ball moving on the outside part of the plate. Very tough for a left hand hitter to hit a, a fastball in the strike zone on the outside part of the plate high. And that'll bring up Alex Arias who is playing at third base. Gary Sheffield has a bad right shoulder cannot throw probably will not start a game the rest of the year. He can be used as a pinch hitter. So Arias is going to see some time at third base. He's also a shortstop saw him with the Cubs last year. In fact, he had a five hit game with Chicago last season. One ball, no strikes to Arias. Wicked foul out of play right side. Look out. And the count even now, one ball and one strike on him. And that fan has a baseball. Happy fan. Next pitch to Arias, line drive center field on a base hit. Dexter fields it on a couple of hops and gets it back in, and that's hit number one tonight for the Florida Marlins. We've been told that Pat Rapp, three and five, will be the starting pitcher here against Ben Rivera for the Florida Marlins. Thanks to Charlie McCormick for bringing that into us. 
That will be on Wednesday night. Tomorrow night it'll be David Weathers out of the Toronto Blue Jays organization. Here's Bob Nadel, the catcher, batting at 244. Nadel also out of the out of uh, not also he is from the Montreal organization getting a chance to catch now because Santiago is out with a sore hand and we're told he hurt his hand catching the knuckleball. Wow. Got it in the wrong spot a few times so Nadel getting a chance I can to play. understand that. I used to try and hit it with a net. <laughs> Figured I had a better chance if I could catch it with the net take it out and throw it somewhere. Nadal swings and misses. They're pretty high on this young kid. This kid has got an outstanding arm. I was talking to Gary Carter about him. I said, well, tell me a little bit about what you've seen. He says he's got a better than average arm. He's thrown out seven of 17 base runners. He threw out a pretty good number in the minor leagues, which is over 40 percent. Hey, uh, anything over 30 percent, 33 percent is, is, is good in this league. And this young kid already at 41 percent. So there this is his fifth start the runner goes a swing and a miss and Dalton's got him dead to rights. Trying to play a little hit and run there with Nadal it looked like he swings through the pitch and Arias is caught stealing for the first time this year. Dalton are two outs. Forty first time he's thrown out a runner. Thrown out a hundred out of one hundred and seventeen runners he's thrown out forty one of them at a total of thirty five percent or so. I guess that goes along, Jay, with what you're talking about, that they don't score many runs, so they're going to try and play a little hit and run when they get a chance. And now the one two to Natal. He fouls it back. Two outs, nobody on base in the second inning. Phillies lead at two to nothing. First of three with the Florida Ball Club. And there is Benito Santiago not playing. Not having anywhere near the year they hoped he would have. In fact, he's, his career has been going downhill the last few years. And he's still a young man. Still make a lot of money. Yeah. Well, the one thing Latchman was disturbed about, I asked him, give me the pros and cons of your team this year, is the fact that uh, they don't score a lot of runs, but they don't do a lot of the little things to help them get the runs. Advancing the runner, getting the runner in with a big two out hit, uh, laying down the bunt, the hit and run. High in the air to left field, a lot of room for Milt Thompson. Ball will not be carrying as well, Jay, this time of the year. And Thompson puts it away, and they are gone on the Marlins here in the second. No runs, they pick up a hit. Nobody left on base. Two nothing Phillies. I was taking Florence for our daily walk when I got a daily number feeling. Three, one, two. Good hit. A street sign told me she should play straight. And for more ways to win, Joe had an idea. Boxing. Hey, Boomer. So I encouraged Flo to cross the street, avoiding the usual distractions, and dropped her off to play. Stay. The Pennsylvania Lottery's daily number. Don't forget to play every day. Three hours and a bowl of chow later. I did it! She did it. Boy, are my dogs tired. I ordered pepperoni and onions on this pizza. I can't taste them. I can't even see them. They're just got small. Small. Small? How small? Very small. Very small? Very, very small. That small? Infinitely small. Want big toppings? Really big? Try the new chunky style pizza from Pizza Hut. It's got big chunks of meat and vegetables for taste you can actually see. Hey, I don't believe it. I see one. Where? Boop. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> for taste you can see, it's the new chunky style pizza from Pizza Hut. Now get five great tasting breadsticks delivered for just $1.49. Haddonfield Lumber Company continues its 40th anniversary celebration with a fantastic fall sale. Replace your worn carpet with Coronet Iridescence Carpeting. Carpeting that withstands the wear and tear of today's living. And for one-stop shopping and convenience, let Haddonfield Lumber install your new floor covering for you. Whether it's vinyl, hardwood, ceramic tile, or carpet, we guarantee top quality installation by fully insured, skilled professional contractors. For the best values and exceptional customer service, come to these Haddonfield Lumber retail locations now through October 10th for all your home improvement needs. You'll get a great look in Phillies poster free compliments of Acme, plus plenty of fun surprises when the Phillies play the Braves on Fan Appreciation Day, Sunday, September 26th at 1.35. Reserve your tickets now. Call 463-1000. And there's a look behind home plate at Scouts Row. This time last year, those seats were empty. I wonder what the yeah. interest is this year. I think a lot of them with the Braves coming in. In fact, a former uh, teammate of mine, John Van Orton, used to be with the Giants, now scouting for the Braves. He's here. I like to see a whole bunch of guys out there. And they want to scout this Philly team. A couple of fellas, one of them, a couple of them were up there uh, who work for the Chicago White Sox, are watching the Phillies all weekend in Montreal. 
anticipating a possible World Series match. Nice to talk about this stuff, but it's very premature. Yeah, I'll tell you the one bad thing. Philly's lost a coin toss there if it goes to a tie. So, yeah, I mean, nobody wants to go back to that no. hellhole again. No, 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 no. Having no, no. just spent three days in the dome in Montreal, believe me, nobody wants to go back. So there will be no tie. Kevin Stocker having a tremendous half season here with the Phillies. Swings and misses at a knuckleball. I'd like to wish a happy birthday tonight to Nick Viola of Northeast Philadelphia. Beyonce of Sharon Acella works here at the ballpark part time. I've got 20 or 30 myself. And this, this is a, a good one right here. Alan Evy B. and Keeney of South Philadelphia, right around, right out there past the left field wall, watching the ball game. They've been married 57 years. Happy birthday to good friends Al and Evie. I know you're watching the ball game tonight and enjoy it. Stocker got you a base hit. Right back through the middle. But Kevin Stocker's on with yet another hit. He continues to bat over 350. Oh, he's amazing. You know, from the left side at 326, but from the right side over 400. Now, that was a good knuckleball. That ball, as you saw right there, broke down and on the outside part of the plate, and Stocker stayed with it, kept his weight back, and just hit it right back up the middle. If you try and pull that pitch, you probably ground out to the second baseman. And Kurt Schilling, there you see the numbers on Schilling. He'll probably be up there to bunt. Schilling has 12 sacrifices on the year. He's around to bunt, and he takes the flutter ball outside. This pitch is hard to hit. Is it tough to bunt? Huh. You ever tried to catch a butterfly in a jar? Like a lightning bug, huh? Yeah, same thing. You know, I just it, the movement is you're trying to follow it. It seems like you're always a day late and a dollar short. You know what I mean? Good bunt by Schilling. Hops on it quickly, but he'll go right to first. Brett Barbary covers. Sacrifice one four. Stocker to second base. Put one out for Lenny Dykstra. It's a 13th sacrifice hit for Schilling on the year. And that's a big part of uh, the pitcher's repertoire. You know, they talk about your pitching, but hey, you still got a hit. And if you can't help yourself at the plate, you're only doing yourself an injustice. Schilling with 13 sacrifices gets the job done. Now it's up to the hitters on this club to get that run home. And Schilling getting congratulations all around on the bench. Lenny singled the lead off the game and then was out on a fielder's choice. Thanks for batting at 306 and the pitch is a little harder knuckleball that time. Charlie Happel changed speeds with his knuckleball and that was the hardest one I think he's thrown so far. Happy birthday to Phil Donatello senior 73. Thanks for takes it low a ball and a strike. How about Bob Ash senior from Belmar New Jersey he's 74 today. This is 353rd straight game at the vet he is at tonight. Well, congratulations, Bob, on both accounts. Knuckleball outside, and it's two and one. How about Raymond Herb from Reading, PA? 85 years old today. Well, congratulations. 85 years young. And Alice Headman from Quakertown, PA. She's 79. A lot of birthdays today, and we congratulate you all. Thanks, sure it takes it outside. Happy birthday to Jimmy and Mark Vital. Richie Ashburn sent that over to us. We wish you a happy birthday. Charlie Huff. Boy, has he been around a long time. Drafted by the Dodgers in June of 66. Was that a fastball? That was a fastball, yes. Yeah, he, you'll see a <laughs> fastball usually when he gets 3 0 every now and then, and he'll change speeds with it. And what he tried to do with that is put it on the outside corner, and we'll show it to you again. Kind of surprised Lenny, too. Look at this. Little fastball, and I'll tell you what, that's a strike. Uh, that is a strike, ladies and gentlemen, and Dykstra got one. Here's Mickey, who scored in the first inning after singling. Mickey getting a chance to play now that Mariano Duncan's going to be out for a while. And Morandini has had a fine season when he's gotten a chance to play, and Duncan had just been great. So the Phillies have had a terrific platoon situation down there. Mickey hitting 405 plus in his last 13 games and done an excellent job defensively. Morandini right now second among National League second baseman in fielding percentage. With a percentage of 991, he's made just four errors, and he's gone 63 straight without an error. And he's up among the league leaders in triples, as you see there. 
Well, G1 would be nice about now. There's a line drive to center. It's a base hit and held at third is the base runner. Kevin Stocker as the ball is hit right on one hop to Chuck Carr in center. So the Phillies have them loaded again here in the second inning, this time for Crock. Nice play by Carr, too. The defense was set up perfectly, but Carr came charging that ball very hard. You know Dykstra's got good speed. Watch him speed in and catch that ball and quickly on two steps, make the perfect throw in. The ball's cut off. In fact, Estrada had a little trouble getting over there. Carr got to the ball and got it in so quickly. So fine play by Carr to keep the run from scoring. Stocker, rather, not Dykstra. Dykstra is at second. And Morandini at first. Phillies have good speed on the bases right now for Kruk, who grounded into a fielder's choice as Dykstra was hung up between home and third and tagged out. John later scored the second run in the first inning for the Phillies. Kruk, a line drive to center. Here comes Carr. He can't get it. Loops in for a hit. He butchers it. One run scores. Here comes Dykstra. He'll score. Throw gets away from everybody. Can Huff get it? Yes. But moving up to second is Cruck. And the Phillies lead it four to nothing. And there's a lot of scoring going to have to be done on this. And we'll just wait. <laughs> well, here I've been telling you all about Chuck Carr's exploits about being a good outfielder. As Cruck gets a uh, knuckleball that kind of floated up there in the outside part of the plate. The ball looked like it hit right on a wet spot. Took a very high hop. You see Carr leap to try and flag it down. Looked like he took his eye off it and then quickly recovering, but makes a bad throw to the infield. You know, they teach you one thing. Once you get the ball, you got to hit the cutoff, man. That's your other job as the outfielder. And Carr's throw was low, scooted by everybody. Crook goes into second. Phillies get another run. And if it hadn't been for Charlie Huff backing up, Phillies would have got a third run. So and scored a single, two yeah. RBIs, and then an error on Carr, allowing Cruck to go to second. Jay is Richie Lewis, the Florida State product, starts loosening. Well, that's a big hit by by John Cruck. Phillies really need to jump out and get some runs here after that tough three-game series in Montreal. I think just for their own peace of mind. Well, if they win the game tonight, you'll look right back at what Jim Eisenreich did in the first inning with two outs. Yep. Loosen everybody up and right out of the chute. Collins, as you see, will bat right-handed again. Dave walked his first time. And people say, well, why will he bat right-handed against Huff? It's because he's not going to throw him a breaking ball. He's not going to get any fun. He's going to come around it. So that's why he's batting right-handed against Charlie Huff, the knuckleballer. Infield all the way in now for Florida. Phillies have six hits already. Deep to right center field. Carr going away back. He won't get it. It is off the wall on one hop. Morandini scores. Here's Crock Collins at second with a double. Phil six. Florida nothing here in the second. Well, I guess batting right-handed wasn't so bad after all. People out there wondering why he doesn't bat left-handed. From the right side, Crook or Hollins hitting 322. The knuckleball, as you can see, floated up and away about the same spot as John Crooks was on the outside part of the plate. Hollins going with the pitch, hitting it over Carr's head. And the Phillies take a quick 6-0 lead here in the bottom of the second inning. Darren Dalton, the battery, popped up with the bases loaded his first time. Dave Hollins now with 88 runs batted in on the year. He has a chance to knock in 100 and score 100. What an offensive player he is. Bounces up there and a good block by Nadal. There is Hollins, one of the best base runners I've ever seen. I'll tell you what, it goes back to Kurt Schilling in this inning. Second batter up after Stocker single. He got the sacrifice down. Now Huff had to pitch Dykstra very carefully. He walked him, and then that's when everything started. So Schilling, in my opinion, got the inning started this time with a great sacrifice and getting Stocker in scoring position. As we saw Dirty Kurt a little while ago. Kind of like sitting there with that six-nothing lead. One ball, one strike to Dalton. Now there was that hard knuckleball you talked about earlier. Every now and then he'll really try and bust that knuckleball in there. And on that situation, the ball doesn't flutter as much. The ball goes straight down. Left field. Conine waits, squeezes it. 
Two outs here comes Hollins for third and he makes it. Telling you he is really aggressive. Oh, it's a good hustle play because he saw Conine going back and he caught the ball back on his heels. He didn't set himself upright. In other words, you saw him, he caught the ball and he was leaning back and Conine with about an average arm. So Holland's got the jump and he was able to get in there third. Good play, good read by Holland. And you say, what's the big deal getting there with two outs? Well, when you have a knuckleballer on the mound, it's a real big yes, deal. Yes, it is. So here is Eisenreich got it all started for the Phillies in the first inning with a big two run single bases loaded two outs at the time. Now they have Hollins at third and two outs and four more runs in and lead it six to nothing. Phillies have seven hits already. And you can believe that Bob Nadel in his first game catching a knuckleball isn't concerned about Dave Hollins at third base. If he misses one. Eisenreich hits at the second where Barbary gobbles it up, throws out Eisenreich. Phillies have a big inning. They pick up four runs, four more hits, one error, and one left. Six nothing fills after two. Anything to fit me? No offense, Mr. Jones, but you are a little on the small side. I need more choices. Harry, give me those genuine yellow pages. Look, choices. Italian, Greek, Chinese. You want more? Those are restaurants. That's right. You put some meat on those bones and come back and see us. Nine out of ten use it. Mr. Matterhorn! The genuine New Jersey Bell yellow pages from Bell Atlantic. Are you losing weight? To soar with eagles, be the best. To win the industry's highest awards for quality, commit to excellence. Provide superior quality products and have the strength to offer them at more than 12,500 locations nationwide. More than any other major brand. Discover for yourself the difference quality can make. Fly with the new superpower. You'll get a great look in Phillies poster free compliments of Acme, plus plenty of fun surprises when the Phillies play the Braves on Fan Appreciation Day, Sunday, September 26th at 1.35. Reserve your tickets now. Call 463-1000. All right, folks, if you want to reserve a spot for the Phillies Dream Week, there's still time because it's in Clearwater, Florida this year, but you got to act soon. First week is already sold out. There was the numbers. 9 3 8 1200 Dave Hollins makes a play a guy a dream about making a dream week <laughs> hard to his left throws him out one away. We'll see you dream week next. No year. you couldn't believe that one. Watch this play right here. Hollins on a bullet. Nice diving stab gets up makes the throw Whitmore with pretty good speed. Can't quite outrun the ball. That was Daryl Whitmore a former defensive back for the Mountaineers of the University of West Virginia thrown out by that Buffalo native Dave Hollins a huge fan of Jim Kelly and the Bills and Walt Weiss a former terrific player with the Oakland Athletics having a good year. Sometimes if you look at Hollins you, you think that he might play for the Buffalo Bills with that intensity that he has in the locker room. We told you that number for Dreamway folks 938 1200 that's 938 1200. Better hurry up, make your call now because it's going fast and it's a great time to go down there when there's snow all over Philadelphia and you're down on the beach in Clearwater, Florida, in the sun, having fun with the likes of Brzezinski and Maddox and Hebner and Wheeler and Bo and Cash and Tukovia, all those Looney Tune guys. One and one to Weiss, and the pitch is over for a strike. Schilling has not walked the batter. Curtis struck out three thus far and he has a lot of runs he's not used to this leading at six to nothing Schill hasn't lost a game for a long long time how about July 11th against the Giants 10 to 2 here at the vet pitches down low ball two two and two during that time Schilling has made 12 starts he's six and oh with six no decisions and the Phillies are 10 and two 
And there's Nigel Wilson going to come out and bat. As Charlie Huff is going to be gone after two innings. I think one thing that Philly pitchers like to see is the fact that cool weather is upon us. And it makes them a little bit stronger and they're able to go more innings with less pitches. Of course, Johnny Padres is happy about this weather. There's a little looper and Morandini can't get it. It's a base hit as Eisenreich gets it back in. So Walt Weiss has a one out single and that will bring up Nigel Wilson the Marlins first selection in the expansion draft last year. Here's the pitch. Pretty good pitch by Schilling ball inside but Walt Weiss as Chris said is just hitting up the storm and even though the ball was right on the handle of the bat he was able to fight it off and get another hit. Wilson made his major league debut at San Diego on the eighth of this month. And you see he has yet to pick up a major league hit in 12 at bats. Batted 292 at Edmonton this year. Triple A for Florida in 96 games with 17 homers, 68 runs batted in. He was drafted from the Toronto organization, as we say, the number one pick overall for the Marlins last year. Pitch to Nigel Wilson, and he's a little late on that one, 0 and 2. I want to thank uh, Paul Vogel, the owner of Fudge Kitchen, for sending everybody up a whole bunch of fudge and saltwater taffy and all the things that are low calorie. Just missed outside, didn't get the pitch. Nigel Wilson's a six foot one, 185 pounder, a native Canadian from Oshawa, Ontario. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. That's the second out of the inning. And Schilling has his fourth of the game. Nice pitch by Schilling. He just goes right after Wilson. You can see that fastball up in the strike zone. As I mentioned earlier, left-handers have a tough time hitting the fastball on the outside part of the plate above the belt. Schilling with good heat on the fastball just throws it right by him. And Chuck Carr, the batter, the switch hitter, struck out his first time up. Stay tuned. Larry Rosen's coming along with the Superstar Gallery after this half inning. And you will see close up the guy who has made it possible for Florida to be very competitive this year, Brian Harvey. Did the uh, Expo say anything up there about Larry Walker? Uh, everybody was telling, gee, he's a Canadian because he's not French Canadian. They're going to they're get rid of this guy? Not that big a deal well, to them. <laughs> I guess not. I mean, you know. No. There's a guy that's from Canada. He's playing in Montreal. He's having a great year. And they have to say, well, he, he's not French Canadian, so we think we're going to not sign him to a contract next year. Well, they think they have some other players coming, too. And uh, they can't, they don't want to pay him $5 million a year or four, whatever he's going to get. So there's Chucky Carr getting a base hit to left field and stopping at second is Walt Weiss, hit number three in the ball game. Yeah, the guy they really like up there is that pitcher Denis Boucher who pitched the other night. Carr going the other way with a pitch. Carr pretty much hitting his average against right-handed pitchers. 271 on the year against right-handers. 273 on the year. So Carr doing a pretty good job and has really caught the eye of Marlin manager Rene Lapshin. Barbary the batter also out of Montreal's organization. There's a pattern developing that there's a lot of good Montreal people around. They have had a tremendous farm system for a number of years. Base is clogged up a little bit for Carr, which is good news. He leads the league in steals with 50 of them. But Walt Weiss is on second. Barbary swing and a miss. 0 oh 2. Barbary's been on the disabled list twice this year. They like him as their second baseman, but they've had trouble keeping him healthy. He's had a problem with a knee and also with an elbow. Schilling's pitch. Is that like that? The leg bone's connected to the thigh bone. The thigh bone's connected to the arm bone. One yeah, of those things. He's had like. a lot of problems yeah. with a lot of bones. <laughs> I noticed he's had a couple of stints on the DL. So makes it tough when you're trying to solidify your infield and you keep losing guys to the DL. A ball and two strikes. Bouncing up there in a nice block by Dalton. So Charlie Huff is out of the game now as Nigel Wilson batted for him. And the line on Huff is two. Inning seven hits, six earned runs, two walks, and no strikeouts. Something that Dalton really didn't expect here a 58 foot curveball. The Dutch stays right with it. 
keeps the ball in front of him, keeps a couple of speedsters from advancing to another base. And the count even at two and two on Brett Barbary. Schilling the stretch on the pitch. Pop up foul off the screen behind home plate. Six, seven, and oh for the Phillies. No runs, three hits, an error for the Florida Marlins. And we are in the third inning, the first of three. Mike Williams will pitch here tomorrow night against right handed David Weathers. Phillies trying to win the first game of this series and just win some more ball games and try and accomplish what they started out a long, long time ago, and that's win the division. Florida 13th among the National League team leaders in hitting at the 251 average. They've been shut out 14 times this year. You start looking at the runs they score, they don't score a whole lot of runs. So it's amazing to see a guy like Ryan Harvey with 45 saves, and yet a team with the amount of wins that the Marlins have. Renee Lashman told me today he's hoping they could win at least one or two more so they don't lose a hundred. Full count pitch, the runners go and they're loaded. With two outs for Jeff Kona. That's walk number one issued by Schilling. Two singles and a walk in the inning. Happy anniversary to Bill and Oli Davis from Media. Their 40th and Lauren Jim Jenkins from Lansdale 55. So congratulations on those anniversaries. Happy birthday to Donnie Rudruff Jr. Jeff Conine uh, popped up to Cruck foul his first time up. As Schilling had a 1 2 3 first inning. So the bases are loaded with two outs. Phillies six ex Expos. Phillies six Marlins nothing. <laughs> hey you've got that Canadian team on your mind huh. Tell you what after those three days it's tough to forget that atmosphere. I mean it's so nice and peaceful here tonight. And that uh, that's nice. Photographer gives a fan of baseball. No balls and one strike on Conai. Schilling trying to work out of some third inning trouble. Here comes the 0 1 pitch. Fastball high, and he takes it 1 and 1. Schilling looks like he just lost his concentration a little bit here in the third inning. There's a young fan with the ball after all the runs the Phillies have scored early, 6 to nothing. And the pitch is over for a strike. One and two. And he just needs to get it back a little bit. And you see the grand slams this year, and Jeff Conine right up there. Darren Dalton with two. You know, sometimes when a pitcher sits and watches teams score four runs in an inning, kind of gets out of sync a little bit. Thinks, well, maybe I don't have to go out and be so careful now. There he makes a great pitch. A hard breaking ball away. Strikeout number five. Conine fires his helmet. No runs, two hits, no errors. And the Marlins will leave them loaded. Six nothing fills. Time now for another visit to the Superstar Gallery as Larry Rosen visits with Marlins closer, All Star Brian Harvey. It's been said all year long when you play the Florida Marlins, you're in an eight inning game. Because all season long, the ninth has belonged to one Brian Harvey. A controversial expansion acquisition. Do expansion clubs really need a closer? Harvey, coming off surgery, has provided an emphatic yes. The Marlins have tasted first-year respectability, and Brian Harvey knows he's a significant part of the reason why. I was excited to go down there. I was going to be back with Marcel Lashman, so I was really excited about going to Florida. I didn't know how the arm was going to be coming off the surgery, but everything went great. And uh, like I say, I'm happy to be back with Marcel because he knows me pretty well and he keeps me online, so it's good to be with him. Are you surprised at how well you've thrown this year coming off the surgery? Uh, I had surgery in 89 also, and I threw the ball pretty well after that, but uh, now nah, everything feels good and things are working. Who is this? Now, there is Brian Harvey down there in the bullpen as Larry Rosen just had a nice talk with him. the great forkballer Brian Harvey and when he comes into a game it's over and the Phillies are hoping that he'll stay in that bullpen all Forever. three days. You know you got to consider as a manager on this team when you're playing and watching the new pitcher Richie Lewis and there are his numbers is you can only play the Marlins for seven innings because once they bring in Harvey the job that he's done hey, it's a different game. 
So this is a seven inning game as far as Jim Fregosi is get the lead and keep it after seven. And keep Harvey out of there. Here is Richie Lewis, a Florida State product out of Muncie, Illinois. 5'10, 175 pounder. The Phillies have seen him four times this year, five and two third innings, no earned runs, and he is 1 0 against the Phillies. He's done a pretty good job. Struck out 34 batters in his last 37 innings pitched, has Richie Lewis. He'll face Milt Thompson. Lewis with an assortment of pitches. He's going to look like he's throwing 100 miles an hour after <laughs> no. Charlie Huff. Fastball, and it does have some sink to it. Curveball, probably his best pitch. It's a heartbreaking curve, and he's got a changeup. He'll cut his fastball a little bit, almost looks like a slider. High chop to second. Barbary backs up. He's going to have to hurry, and he didn't get him. Once he backed up, he was yep. in trouble with Thompson. Base hit, Mill Thompson. That's a difference. You can't back up on that play. It's easy to say. You can see now he has to wait for the high hop. Well, if you caught any kind of speed at all, you're going to beat it out. As you can see, Milt Thompson already with one foot on the bag going by. You got to charge that ball, catch it on the short hop, and then make the sidearm throw. And Kevin Stocker, the batter. Stocker got a base hit and scored in the second inning. Thompson on at first, hit number eight for the Phils. And their first, of course, off Richie Lewis. Well off the line at third is Arias, the third baseman. Infield a double play down. Then the pitch to Stocker is outside ball one. Phillies coming into play tonight, 90 and 59. Thompson not likely to go here. With a four game lead over the Montreal Expos, who are idle tonight. They take on the Atlanta Braves tomorrow night at the Big O. Understand they have about 16,000 seats sold for that one compared to this past weekend. Here's a shot right at him. Throw to first out of first is Thompson. A double play. Oh, Eric Gregg right on top of that one. That ball is hit like a bullet. Thompson took a couple of steps, and you can see, tried to dive back to first, just didn't get that arm extended out quick enough. Watch Thompson up one two steps that's all but the quick play by Barbary makes up for taking that high hop and Thompson just doesn't get back in time. Just cannot run a baseball. And that'll bring up Schilling. And it bounces away birthday wishes tonight to Bill Danley from Haddonfield New Jersey. Who is 91. And also to Nick and Somo from Cherry Hill who works down the Phillies phone center. Shilling a line shot. Boy, Barbary's breaking in a glove. With those <laughs> balls in the inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, nobody left. There are your totals, and we're through three. This is your world. Genuine and true. Working together in all that you do. And you're giving it your best. Time to be a I can get in 72 hours. I wouldn't trust my car past the city limits. For the way you travel today more than ever, the smart money is on budget. Ask for budget smart rates for great prices on cars that won't cramp your style, all with unlimited mileage. The smart money is on budget. The legendary Notre Dame Fighting Irish take on the scrappy Navy midshipmen in a fall football classic. Saturday, October 30th, 1210 at Veterans Stadium. Get tickets at Ticketmaster, the Phillies box office, or call 463-1000 to order tickets in advance. Notre Dame Navy, Saturday, October 30th. Sponsored in part by the Philadelphia Inquirer, Herman's World of Sporting Goods, Super Pretzels, Soft Pretzels, and WOGL. Color, excitement, fun, go! Back here at Veterans Stadium, Chris Wheeler with Gary Maddox, fresh from his 
radio work in Montreal over the weekend. You guys can have that radio. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's that's difficult work, especially going back past three innings. I started to fade going into the fourth, so I'm not used to that. What a but, series, huh? Yeah, it, it was exciting. The, the noise and everything that we heard up there, the fans, I mean, they were into it. It was all, and all the noise was amplified by the fact that we were in the Ast in, in a place like the Astrodome where the sound was just vibrating off the walls. Yeah. It was too much. That is, that is some place. The Big O in Montreal. And the Phillies are very happy to be home before the bet faithful tonight. And they lead it six to nothing as we go to the fourth inning. And Arrestes Destrada leads it off. Chase the high fastball struck out his first time up. Yeah, give me prism. Give me three. <laughs> <laughs> he had to work 12 innings one night. Really? Swing and a foul tip held on to by Darren Dalton. And you know, it was the first time I had a chance to work with Harry Callis, the master. You know, that's always, you know, you spend half the time being nervous about the fact you're going to be working with him. Got to work with his whiteness. Yeah. Whitey, he's all right. I enjoy, I enjoy that. Of course, I was familiar with you. I felt like I was at home. <laughs> I get this guy named Robert Brubaker from Harrisburg wrote a letter and he didn't give me his address. And he's mad at us. He says we made some snide remarks about Whitey. Has he ever heard the remarks Whitey makes? <laughs> I mean, it's all uh, Robert. Please, it's tongue in cheek, and he's always on us. Yeah. I mean, he called me a draft dodger one time. There he is. Now you see he's working hard over there again tonight. All the time. Every time he sees me, he asks me, "How does it feel to be the second best center fielder?" Right. I mean, Robert, it's all fun. Please, yeah. thanks for the letter, but I mean, you know, we don't get on Whitey. We have a lot of fun with each other up here. Andy's on, Andy's on his own right now, isn't he? <laughs> Thanks for the letter. Down on strikes goes to Strata. And Arias has single to center tonight. I mean, this looks like a laugher, but Jim Eisenreich doesn't get that base hit. I tell you what, we got a very close ball game working here. You okay. got you got some tightness to set in, right? Yeah, it's very important to get that. I mean, if you can get a big lead like this, it just makes everybody feel a lot more relaxed. There's no question about it. And that was just a huge hit he got. A two out bases loaded hit in the first inning. Arias, a high chopper, nice play. Hollins fires, got him. And Dave's made two dandies tonight, two outs. I mean, and then Dave Hollins has been having trouble with his throwing. Six nothing, though, that becomes an easy throw. One you're not concerned with close ball game. You might want to squeeze that a little bit. Good play right here. Watches it into his glove, come down and right on the money. So two up and two down here in the fourth inning, and that'll bring up the catcher Bob Nadel. And the pitch is over for a strike. Schilling tonight a walk and six strikeouts. Fly ball center field and shallow. Plenty extra right there. He waits and squeezes it. Strong inning for Schilling. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. We head to the bottom of the fourth. Bill. Often taken for granted. Yet it's as precious as the very air we breathe. It's called freedom. And it's what inspired Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield to create the new personal choice. A health plan that offers people the low costs of an HMO without asking them to give up what they value most. Their freedom. Personal choice. The health plan that controls costs, not people. Funding a credit card you can expect more from is a simple process of elimination. First blow off all the cards with the highest rates. Then the ones that don't offer fixed or variable rate options Worldwide acceptance and 24 hour customer service. And what about price assurance, satisfaction guaranteed, purchase protection, and extended warranties at no extra charge? So, what's left? Chemical Bank MasterCard. If you have one, use it. If not, apply now. I ordered pepperoni and onions on this pizza. I can't taste them. I can't even see them. They're just got small. Small. Small? How small? Very small. Very small? Very, very small. That small? Infinitely small. Want big toppings? Really big? Try the new chunky style pizza from Pizza Hut. It's got big chunks of meat and vegetables for taste you can actually see. Hey, I don't believe it. I see one. Where? 
Hey, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> For taste you can see, it's the new Chunky Style Pizza from Pizza Hut. Now get five great tasting breadsticks delivered for just a dollar forty-nine. To congratulate Mary Andre from Palermo, New Jersey, who won our contest to come up here and spend some time with us in the booth. Nice to see you, Mary. Nice to see you too. We nice to right see you hey, too, Wheels. <laughs> you, sound, you sound like you're a big fan, huh? I sure am. A hundred percent Philly fan. How do you like this six-nothing lead? Oh, great, 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 <laughs> great. I hope we get to the World Series. Honey, I won't be able to go this year because I didn't get season tickets. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, well, we really thank you for entering the contest. Congratulations for winning. We're going to let Gary come back in here, all right? Okay. Let okay, me you stick around for a while. You can watch it up here with us, okay? Thanks, Mary. Okay. Mary's going to keep score. <laughs> that was nice. Where's my analyst? Is he back? Hey. <laughs> that was nice for Mary right there, huh? Thanks, Mary. We'll see you. Okay. She's got her grandkids here in the background. All right. <laughs> Lenny Dykstra, the batter. One for one tonight with a single, a walk, and a run scored. Lenny's run scored number 136 and walk number 121 for Dykstra in this incredible offensive season that he's having. Here's a 2 0 pitch to Dykstra. Rip foul and out of play. Facing Richie Lewis for the first time tonight. It's Dykstra, Morandini, and Crock. It's Charlie Hop lasted just two innings. He didn't get a chance to have you talk about old Charlie. I know Charlie. We go back to a ways. We sure. played together in uh, AAA when Charlie was in the, the Dodgers organization. I think right now, the, if, if I had to say what was different, is that he just can't throw the ball as hard as he used to. I mean, Charlie used to be able to throw a, a knuckleball, I mean, that went, you couldn't hit it. And how hard he threw it depend, you know, determined how much he wanted to make it move. And he just doesn't seem to have that ability anymore. Dykstra ahead in the count and gets another wicked swing and fouls it out of play. They said he went to his mouth right before that pitch, so that was ball four. And Lenny Dykstra gets another walk. And Richie Lewis is charged with his first walk as Terry Tata said that he went to his mouth while he was still on the pitching area. And that's a walk. Let's see if we can pick it up here. Here's Tata looking down at his indicator. And now he looks out at Lewis. Oh, Tata went to his mouth. <laughs> Uh, he had called it at that point. Well, then what was it? Called it on himself. That's what it, it must have been at some point. I don't know. That's, I didn't say it either. I mean, but it definitely was a walk because they announced it as a walk in the uh, in the press box. Well, Warren Dean right out of bed, a hustling play turns a single into a double. Two for two tonight. And Richie Lewis pitch bounces up there. Mickey playing now with Mariano Duncan gone for a few days, serving his three game suspension. Happy birthday tonight to Harry Grimm from Quakertown, who's 62. Mickey's average at 245 on this two for two, getting his first start since the 11th of this month against Houston. And Lewis gets it over for a strike. Lewis in his second inning work. Phillies hit a few balls hard off Lewis last inning. Didn't get anything out of it. You know, hopefully the Phillies can, can play good against the, the Marlins here, and we can get that harmony back together between the fans and the players and and everything. It's a uh, testy time of the year. You guys went through this. Oh, man, it's testy for everybody. Exactly. The fans, their nerve, their nerves are right. shattered. The players, you can imagine how they must feel. Fans, the only thing that the, the, with the players and the players don't understand what it's like here, how people people react, and and you try to explain it to them, they don't want to hear it, and, and you can understand that. But the fans are nervous, as you say. The players take it personal that they talk about 1964. They say, "What did we have to do with that?" But you can't help that when you live around here. <laughs> it's just part of being a Philadelphia fan. Right. Can't help it. I think the longer you live around here, the more you understand that. I mean, but with free agency the way it is now, guys switching teams, they don't really establish themselves in a city long enough to learn anything about, uh, you know, the fans. Morandini swings and misses at a breaking ball, and that's strikeout number one for Richie Lewis, one out here in the fourth. 
There's a breaking ball down. Nice Let me pitch. tell you something. I lived through 64 every one of those games and I understand how people feel about it. But the players say hey don't get on us. We're not going to choke. We're not going to lose this thing for you. And that's the way they feel and we'll see what happens. You know I think if they want to find out how the fans feel you, you find out how the fans feel. Tune into that radio station in the morning. <laughs> WIP you'll find out exactly how the fans feel. I think that's good to know. John Cruck fights off a pitch and loops a base hit the center field and stopping at second is Dykstra. So Cruck has two hits tonight and John's also scored a couple of runs. That's hit number nine for the Phillies. This ball just eats Cruck up but look at that just I mean that's he swung that with his shoulders he was able to get it out in the center field. So Dykstra on at second base. Cruck on at first. Dave Holland's the batter. He's walked doubled in a couple. Holland's batted right handed against Charlie Huff. And now he'll go back to batting left handed against the right hander Richie Lewis. Dave Hollins has scored 97 runs. And you know the time that he's missed with a couple of injuries and he has 88 runs batted in. and you still hear people say why do they keep playing him. That's why <laughs> there's no doubt why he plays I mean, look at I those mean, numbers. The question about whether or not he's in replaced defensively is another thing but this man has to start for you. of course. Here's the 0 1 to him and it's outside. You know and I was asked the question is WIP a represent a cross section of, of the fans. When I hear Bill Giles call in when I hear the mayor of Philadelphia call in and I know that you may say that there are some other people that might be a little wild to call in as well. But everybody seems to call into that station to find <laughs> out what's going on and I, I where else can you find out how the fans feel really. It's a barometer. There's no doubt about it. Now the guys in the morning whether they're sports experts or not. I don't know but they're entertaining and that's how I look at it as entertainment. You get Jody Mack in the afternoon and he's great. Fredericks you know I, I think you can. Uh, <laughs> well you got a show coming up. Huh? What do you want to G cops friends. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Two balls and one strike. I'm sorry. I, that, the, I listen to them the most when the Phillies are having some controversy because I find out what the fans are thinking. <laughs> you find out what the fans are thinking it helps prepare you for the broadcast so let you can me, make it interesting. Let me ask you something. Talk to me. In 1980 when you were playing and right. you weren't always in a good mood. Right. How would you have liked that stuff. Would not. Good. Would not. That's what I thought. <laughs> there is no question about it. That's why you can understand what the Phillies are going through and you can understand what the fans are going through. Three one pitch on the way to Islands. Hard ground ball at the strata. He kicks it. Richie Lewis covers oh, nicely at first and got in good play by the pitcher to cover first base. Well, oh, there is no question. That was a good play by the second baseman, Bar Barberi. Barberi. It's Brett Barberi comes over. Right. Yeah. Picks it up. I mean, stays with it on the ball. It looks like it's right to the strata. He continues to come towards the play and is able to make it. Look how close he is to first base there. 3 4 1, it'll go. See, those are the things that an expansion team can do. They may not be the best players, but there's no reason for them not to hustle and to play good defense or at least play within themselves. And Dalton with a chance for some runs batted in here. Gary with runners at second and third and two outs. And a breaking ball bounces up there. Good play, Nadal. Dykstra thought it was going to bounce a little further away and he was going to score. 6 0. He's trying to get in there. Well, he wants to score those runs. <laughs> He's trying to get in there. Bet. Dutch says, Hope, oh, stay there. I need to knock you in. Trying to get Dutch looked up, but all of a sudden, Lenny was scrambling. Here is Dykstra. He has already scored one run tonight. At second base is John Cruck, who has scored two. Lenny went right through that chalk line on the way back. Here's the 1 0 to Dalton. Another pitch bounces up there and a good play by Nadal 2 0. That's a good eye. That's a good show of how you get back to third base. You come outside the line when you take your lead and when you go back you go back inside the line or on the line to block the catcher's view of third base. And that's where he went right on the line there. I'm watching when he takes his lead. He's on the outside of the line. You go up, You start out outside and you come back inside. Darren with 103 runs batted in. 
Dutch tonight is 0 for 2. He's popped up and flied out to deep left. And Lewis misses again. He has a base open. Eisenreich's on deck. The count's 3 and 0. Dalton looks at Larry Boa to see if he can swing away, and I'm sure he'll get a green light with it. 6 0. You know, and I consider Darren Dalton a good friend of mine, but I'd be the first one to tell you that he's speaking out of frustration now. You know, he is frustrated. Uh, he wants to be doing a lot better. He obviously wants to, he's the leader of the team, and when they're struggling, he feels it he takes it personally. Look at this play by Barbary, and he's going to save two runs. Boy, he made two great plays in that inning. Yeah, no more frustration. No runs, one hit, no errors, and two left. It remains 6 0 Phillies. someone were to design a car about the size of a Ford Taurus outside but with more room for people than Taurus or Toyota Camry inside someone did what if someone were to design a car with safety features Taurus and Camry don't give you like both driver and passenger side airbags standard or an available integrated child safety seat someone did and what if a prestigious magazine were to name this car automobile of the year one of them did Dodge Intrepid this changes everything Just last year, John Pasmato scaled the rocky slopes of Kilimanjaro, trekked through the murky waters of the Amazon, and captained a tall ship through the treacherous Strait of Magellan. Mellon PSFS employees are giving their time to help people embark on some of the greatest adventures of their lives. All it took was learning to read. Soon to be Mrs. Bob Mayfield. <laughs> I guess she said, yeah. <laughs> Got her Phillies hat on. Give her a couple of nookies. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Look at she got the hat on there, and the tag is on it. Looks like uh, what's the lady's name from Hee Haw? Pearl. <laughs> Minnie Pearl. Minnie Pearl. Where's it? <laughs> Gotta be versatile. Gotta know that country and western. <laughs> Never cease to amaze me. Here's Daryl Whitmore will lead it off, the former defensive back from West Virginia. And he lines a single in the center. They really like Whitmore's potential. They're just going to keep playing him, even though he struggled quite a bit. And he gets a base hit there. It's pretty much a pretty risky swing that he has. Watch how he kind of just serves it there. You know, not a whole lot of power in that type of swing. And I'm sure he'll he'll develop a little more, but that was just like a little serve where he kind of cuts underneath the ball and hits it uh Backspin. Walt Weiss, the batter, he's singled tonight. That's hit number four for Florida. We are in the fifth inning, six nothing Phillies. A great play by Barbary has just prevented the Phillies from picking up a couple more. Happy birthday tonight to Elizabeth Fritchie from East Greenville, Pennsylvania, who is 81. Here is Greg Briley, left handed batter, will come out and bat for Rich Lewis. Rob Nen starting to loosen in the bullpen. The right hander who throws very hard. Strike two, says Terry Tata. And the count now a ball and two strikes on the veteran Walter Weiss. And here's a look at the TV games coming up for you tomorrow night on PHL 17, our final Prism game of the year, Wednesday night against Florida, and then the Atlanta Braves are coming to town on Friday night, back on PHL 17. You know, Chris, last year it looks like it might happen again this year. 
I didn't get to say thanks to anybody at Prism for all they had done to help make the broadcast uh, good and for and for helping me along because we were rained out. Rained out, yeah. So this year I'm gonna make sure I get that in. We're gonna, it's not gonna rain on Wednesday. Just tomorrow. We're okay. A little possibility of rain tomorrow. There's a base at the center by Weiss. And stopping oh. at second is Whitmore. So the Florida Ball Club here in the fifth inning comes out with back to back hits and they have two on with nobody out. This game is all of a sudden kind of in slow motion because the Phillies jumped out to that big lead. Slow motion is exactly right because Whitmore, I mean, he didn't even look like he had third base on his mind at all. Dykstra had to come way over to, to feel that ball and he didn't even around the bag. And Greg Briley will be the pinch hitter, the former Seattle Mariner. 196, and there you see his pinch hitting numbers. He's from Greenville, North Carolina. Schilling's pitch is low ball one. You know, I was, I had a chance to ride up to Montreal when, when I was going up there to do the games with uh, Larry Boyd, John Vukovic, and Kurt Schilling. It was interesting hearing them talk because they had talked about Schilling's previous start. Uh, and to hear Kurt talk about how he compared this year you know having a little difficulty in getting the ball exactly where he wants and he said he's tried to get a lot of balls inside and they've just come right back over the plate whereas he said last year it seemed like he could put the ball right where he wanted it. Looked like he put it that one right where he wanted it exactly. on the outside corner one and two to Briley the on deck batter is Chuck Carr and that's what he said if there's one thing he could bring back from last year the ability to put the ball right where he wants. Pitch hitter Greg Briley batting for Richie Lewis, who pitched a couple of scoreless innings, although it took some real good defense for him to do it. Two and two. Line on Lewis, he goes two innings, two hits, a walk, and a strikeout. Pitching behind. There's Richie Lewis pitching behind the starter, Charlie Huff, charged with all six runs thus far. The 2 2 pitch on the way to Briley. At it outside and high, three and two. So, Schilling in danger of loading the bases here. Schilling got out of a bases loaded jam earlier. That was in the third. Struck him out on a bad ball. Got a break there. Briley looked like he chased a high fastball. Strikeout number seven for Schilling. What happens in this situation, you know you're going to get a fastball and you don't make it as good as you should. You know, prior to that, he didn't know what pitch he was getting, so he was more patient up there. Now, when he knows a fastball is coming, it's a lot of guys don't like to take the signs from second base when you have them because they get too excited when they know what pitch is coming. And that's what happened right there. Schilling already at 75 pitches. And Carr the batter, and he has a base hit, and he's also struck out. Schilling's strikeout high is nine, four times, including the last time out against New York on the 15th. There's the line on him here in the fifth inning. And Carr more patient, 2 and 0. On deck's another switch hitter, Barbary. Chuck Carr leads the league in stolen bases with 50, and has had a good year after. Not producing with the New York Met and St. Louis Cardinal organizations. He sure leads the league in balls dived for. Yeah. He's got some showman in him. Woo. Three and oh. I mean, but to me, a guy that would do that, you know, just shows the type of confidence that you need to play in the outfield. Whether he dives unnecessarily or not is another thing, but he definitely has the confidence to play out there and be successful. And he's behind him 3 and 0. Oh. It looked like he took a lot off that and just tried to get it over, figuring Carr was going to take it, and he did 3 and 1. Down by 6, you can do that because, you know, they need a lot of runs at this point. And he walked him. It's the second walk of the ball game. Issued by Schilling, and the bases are loaded, and Johnny Padres is on his way to the mound, as is Darren Dalton to check on Schilling. You know, as surprising as it may seem, you know, you see Kurt Schilling constantly blowing in his hands as if he's, you know, as if they're cold or something like that. It could be a little thing wrong with the grip, but he's definitely out of sync at this point. 
gave up two singles and then struck out the pinch hitter Briley. And now his walk Chuck Carr to load the bases. Briley, I mean, swung at what could have been ball four. He went three and two with him. So. And don't forget, we'll be back with you on Prism on Wednesday. Larry has a pregame show at 7, and then Relay Latchman's Marlins here at 7.30. Ben Rivera is going to pitch that game against Pat Rapp. On the pregame, we have an in-depth interview with Lee Thomas coming your way that night. Barbary gets a fly ball foul down the line. It will go out of play. Barbary tonight has struck out and walked and made a couple of terrific defensive plays last inning to save some runs. You know, Barbary that time not really trying to do a lot with that fastball. He knew he was going to get a fastball from Schilling. You know, tried to put an easy swing on it. I give him a lot of credit for that. Jeff Conine waits on deck. Barbary batting in the two hole. He's a switch hitter. The pitch to him. He tries to check. Can on a high fastball and it's 0 2. He was he was loaded that time. Right, and, that, and that's the whole difference. That's what will happen to you when you don't know what's coming. You know, you'll chase a bad pitch, but having just walked Carr before that and getting that first pitch, he knew he was going to get a fastball from Schilling. That's when, what happens when you don't know what's coming. Fouled at the plate. Take a look at the base runners. Daryl Whitmore is at third base. At second, Walt Weiss. And over at first base, Chuck Carr. And an 0-2 count now on Brett Barbary. And Adam Duckin. <laughs> In their own dugout. Alex <laughs> Harry is getting out of the way. Estrada saying, man, that almost got me. Yeah. You don't have any time to uh, to move or anything. You just hope it misses. You. That's an ideos meal. He's going to head down the other way for a while. Another foul out of play. Schilling keeps throwing fastballs and Barbary keeps fouling them off. Schilling up over 80 pitches here in the fifth inning. Cubs beating the Cardinals three to nothing. No, oh, that's a good pitch from Schilling because Barbary is not taking a good swing at those pitches, and he's hoping. I guess Kurt is hoping really that he'll put it in play somewhere because he's swinging so weakly at it. Here we go again. 0 2. Bounced it up there. Nice block, Dalton. Darren has a lot of trouble blocking balls because of his knees that he can't get down as low as he would like to. That time he really did get low it looked like and blocked that one nicely. Yeah. Well the games are meaning a lot more now so you're going to do those things those little extra things that you may not feel comfortable doing but you saw what he did just get down there make sure it can't get under his legs and let the ball hit him in the chest. A ball and two strikes. No pitch. Breaking ball hit the crock. He'll go for the force at second. They got that one and that'll do it. A run will score. And it's now a six to one ball game as Kruk gets the force at second. He killed to be able to make that play yesterday. Huh. I guess. But it, this situation right here, Kurt Schilling, you know, you could second guess that pitch, a breaking ball. Barbary barely able to get around on the fastball. You throw him a, a curveball. Now look what he does. He ends up pulling the ball. He just happened to pull it right to John Kruk. He'll pick up an RBI, his 32nd. And the Marlins are on the board. Phillies lead at six to one. Runners at the corners, two outs for Conai. Who has popped up foul and struck out. Got him with the bases loaded last time on a slider. Eisenreich right there. He glides over, makes a play. So Schilling gets out with minimal damage. He gives up a run, two hits, no errors, and the Marlins leave two. Through four and a half, six one, Phillies. The metal cylinder is secured and turned in a counterclockwise motion, causing the internal rating to rise and disengage. It's easy to make something as simple as opening a jar complex. The challenge is making the complex simple. But that's what we do at Bell Atlantic Mobile. We take cutting edge technology and place it comfortably in your hands. Bell Atlantic Mobile. Advanced technology and people will make it mean something. The other day, these guys came to me and said, Kirby, how'd you like to be in a cross-training commercial for Nike? You wear the shoes, right? We could come film your workout. 
So I say to them, let me get this straight. You want to make a three-hour commercial? My store is my life. I've given it everything. To me, there's nothing else like it. At Nationwide Insurance, we believe that every business is different. Each one has its own needs. You have to... They've helped me with my home and car insurance, so I knew he could develop a plan to protect my business. And the last thing Bob needs to worry about is insurance. That's my job. Nationwide is on your side. Brought to you by Nationwide Insurance. Nationwide is on your side. Your nationwide agent in Philadelphia is James Daly. The third pitcher of the ball game tonight for the Marlins is the right-hander Rob Nen, six foot four, one hundred and ninety pounder, out of San San Pedro, California. Now makes his home in Seal Beach, California. He was acquired from the Texas Rangers along with Kurt Miller in exchange for Chris Carpenter on July seventeenth, nineteen ninety-three. There's a guy the Phillies desperately want to get back. Throwing that beard, Terry Mulholland, still bothered by the hip flexor. Where am I from? You? You're from Cincinnati. I was born in Cincinnati. Right. I left there when I was four years old, and right. I moved to Los Angeles. San Pedro. San Pedro, is that it? That's it. That's you. Oh, is, that right? is that your hometown? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, San sir. Pedro. <laughs> What's that, near to L.A.? Yeah, it's about 20 miles south of Los Angeles. Okay. Eisenreich the batter got that big hit Gary was talking about earlier in the first inning and then grounded out his last time up. And then as a hard thrower fastball slider. Saw the numbers on him. Twenty seven hits and twenty four innings thus far. Charlie Hupp going two, Richie Lewis going two. So he's doing all this scoring off the starter Charlie Hupp. Eisenreich beats a breaking ball foul first base side. Happy birthday tonight, number 82, to Mary Matichik from Shimokin, Pennsylvania. Got a note from son John, daughter Mary. So happy 82nd to you, Mary. Loves John Cruck. There's the next pitch to Eisenreich. Good sinker ball. Struck him out. That ball, good movement yeah. down. Then Eisenreich is out. Hasn't seen this guy before. Big tall guy coming in there and look at the when he starts that ball down. I mean, I don't know if it sunk as he threw it down. <laughs> Boy, he had that was some low hemp. He had some leverage. He really. Here's Milt Thompson. Milt tonight has grounded out and had an infield single on a ball that ba uh, Barbary kind of backed up on. Chris, now you you brought up John Cruck and the fan liking John Cruck. It, it reminded me that I wanted to wish a, a speedy recovery. Recovery to Chubb Feeney, uh, who had a stroke and was out in California. And the reason John Cruck made me think of that because, you know, he was the general manager or president down in uh, San Diego, and he still speaks a lot, very highly of John Cruck, likes him a lot. Thompson, hard ground ball off the glove of Weiss, pops right back into it, throws him out. Excuse me on that, huh? Yeah, really. Good, staying with it. I mean, Weiss is an excellent shortstop. Thompson hits this ball hard. Looks like a base hit off the bat. That's what happens. You hit something that should be out, <laughs> and you get base hits off of them. Now you hit one you think it might be a base hit. The guy picks you clean. Well, they not will. clean, but picks you. Yeah, Chuck Feeney, longtime National League president, also makes his home out in San Francisco. He does, and uh, he's doing quite well. Doesn't have a speech back right now. I keep in touch with Chubb. Uh, you know, but he's coming along yeah. uh, quite well. His daughter Katie still works for the National League. He sure does. There's Kevin Stocker. Look what he did at Scranton Wilkesbury. Look what he's done in the big leagues. Those things will happen sometimes. Jim Fergosi's a firm believer that there are a lot of guys that don't hit a triple A that hit when they get to the big leagues. He says double A is a key. Watch what a guy hits a double A and you get a real feel for what kind of player he's going to be. That's his own philosophy. Yeah, you know, that works. I'm sure, but I'm sure he'll also tell you that uh, a half a season doesn't prove that nope. you're going to be a good 
good hitter. He but. has a theory on what Stocker. He thinks Stocker is going to hit, and he thinks he can hit 270. If he could do that, I mean, out of the eight hole, yeah. huh, that'd be terrific. Breaks his bat there, and Stocker is out, and the Phillies are gone in order here in the fifth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. Through five, six, one, Phillies. Where to find the Mountain Man? A mountain man can often be found on the trail of adventure in search of remote watering holes or weathering harsh climates. Most often, however, you'll find the mountain man wherever you find smooth bush beer or easy drinking bush light. So head for the mountains and find yourself in the wide open world of the mountain man. It's often taken for granted Yet it's as precious as the very air we breathe. It's called freedom. And it's what inspired Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield to create the new personal choice, a health plan that offers people the low costs of an HMO without asking them to give up what they value most, their freedom. Personal choice, the health plan that controls costs, not people. Inky, Izzy, The Wild Thing, Batty, Dutch, Dude, The Crocker, and Friends. Request the pleasure of your company at Veterans Stadium in 1994. Season ticket plans range from full season to as few as 13 games. For more information, call 463-5000. Billy, season tickets. If you missed your chance this year, make sure you're on board next year. There are plans to suit any budget and schedule from full season plans to just 16 games or 13 Sundays. And there are always special benefits of being a season ticket holder, including options to purchase postseason tickets. So call now to get your name on the list for 1994 Phillies baseball. Don't you miss out again. Call 463 5000 for information. And Gary Maddox is on camera again. <laughs> hey. Chris, I, I had a chance to listen to your show, you know, the Fergosi show. Hi, folks. I always, I always tune you in now, and so. Uh, oh, w O G L <laughs> these 12 10. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now you asked Jim tonight if you he thought the players could enjoy yes. the th the time that they were going through right now. And he said no, he didn't think they could enjoy it, and I have to agree with that. But you know, it's the same with enjoying it along with playing it. The more you're in the more these playoffs you're in the more you are able to enjoy it and the better you're able to play it's a it's a new experience for a lot of guys but once you go through it once the next time you know not to panic and you do appreciate a little bit more and I thought that was a good question thanks yeah well he he, uh, he and I have talked about that and, you know he's such a he has such a great feel for the game because that ball goes off Dalton's mask and for players he's such a players manager and he says you just don't enjoy it when you're going through this the first time because you can't you don't understand what it's all about until you've done it. Yeah and, and there is a, an image you have to portray in the public. You know they don't people don't want to hear you saying that you're afraid or that you're nervous or anything like that because I guess it makes them nervous as well. But you know you really don't the first time you go through something like that man it is nerve wracking. <laughs> Number eight for Kurt Schilling one away from his career high. Oh man. That type of location right there. He's gotten distraught three times tonight. Alex Arias has singled and grounded out. And our Wees remembered tonight recalls the final road trip of 83 when the Wees kids clinched the division. Remember where it was? <laughs> I was already asked that question earlier tonight. To give him the right answer? I still don't know. Chicago. <laughs> I thought it might have been Chicago. <laughs> Now, we clinched twice in Chicago. Yes, once in Pittsburgh. Twice in Tw Pittsburgh. No, once in twice in Montreal. All right. Okay. And once in Pittsburgh for the five division championship. Phillies have never won a division championship here at Veterans Stadium. Well, it goes to show you. This is the last home uh, series. It probably won't happen here. Pretty tough. One ball, two strikes. An awful lot of things that have to go right this week. They just want to play them one at a time right now and beat the Florida Marlins here tonight as they lead six to one. Arias fouls it away. 
And the counts one and two. Here are the standings as the Montreal Expos are not playing tonight. They play Atlanta tomorrow. There you see it. The Cardinals will probably finish third. Foul back. One thing you don't have to worry about when you're in a race like this is to take them one game at a time. That is no problem. You you're taking it one pitch at a time. <laughs> And you don't look ahead or anything. Now you'll watch the scoreboard. I'm not saying that, but you don't start thinking about who you're playing next week or what's happening tomorrow. You're looking at it one pitch at a time. One ball, two strikes. And with all the nervousness in town right now, people are saying, "We well, got it. You got to sweep. You got to take it." And the point of it is, no, you win tonight. Yeah, and that's it. And nervous, you bet. Everybody is nervous, but it's the players that can. Focus that energy into something positive. You don't go up there and try and hit the ball out of the stadium because you feel good. You know, you have to focus it into something that's going to be positive uh, for the team. Arias continues to chase bad pitches and fouls another one back. And the count remains two and two on Alex Arias, the third baseman. Originally signed by Chicago Cubs. Richard and Robin Bingaman Jr. from Sunbury celebrating their wedding anniversary today. Got a nice note from their children, Carrie and Ryan. Married on September 20th, of course, so they really enjoy listening to us, Jay, and Mr. Maddox, it says. Great respect for you, Gary. Yeah, I can understand. Ground ball in the hole, a base hit to left field for Alex Arias. And another hit for Florida. All singles thus far. That is number seven or six. I mean, Kurt Schilling, that's his 100 pitch. 33 ball, 67 strike, a good ratio. But that pitch was right where he wanted it. It was inside, and how Arias was able to hit that ball, you know, has everybody wondering, including Schilling, as he walked behind him towards first base, looking at him like, how'd you hit that? Excellent pitch. He leads off first. Bob Nadel's the catcher. He's flied out twice. Daryl Whitmore, our left handed batter, waits on deck. That's a catcher runner. The Morandini, they turned a double play smartly. 6 4 3, no runs a hit, no errors, and nobody left on base. We're heading to the bottom of the sixth inning. Bills hold a 6 1 lead. And time now for another edition of Wee's Remembered as Larry Rosen recalls that final road trip of 83 where the Wee's kids clinched the Eastern Division. left Philadelphia September 20th after an 8-2 homestand with a five-game winning streak. First up, Montreal, and a doubleheader where a Joe LeFay triple gave John Denny his 17th win, denied Steve Rogers, and ended the Expo's hopes of stealing the East. It was on to St. Louis, where Steve Carlton could make history just the way he wanted to, in the heat of a pennant race. Carlton would master the Cardinals for eight innings, win his 15th game, and join that elite group of surefire inhabitants of Cooperstown, the 300-game winner. The winning streak at eight, the lead at three games. The next night, the streak was at nine after a five-run ninth inning. The streak grew to 10 when Pete Rose popped off the bench as a pinch hitter, singled in the game-winning run for a sweep of the St. Louis Cardinals. The first game in Chicago, Ron Reed saved John Denny's 18th victory. A league season high 11 game winning streak had made the clinching party almost inevitable. It came courtesy of Bo Diaz, who had five hits and two home runs in a 13 run explosion. Al Holland would close it, the champagne flowed, the Wheeze kids celebrating like little boys.
there they are the 1983 National League champions the Phillies who would go on to beat the Los Angeles Dodgers we'll show you that on Wednesday and then lose of course the five game series of the Baltimore Orioles yeah. 10 years ago oh man I'll tell you you, you saw Perez Morgan and Rose in that uh, there's some winning players right there oh yeah and you know it was them pulling together some of the things they had to say that really inspired the team in, in those tough times and you, you remember Pete was doing a lot of sitting they talked about him coming up to pinch hit in that ball in one of those balls had a heck of a September that year Kurt Schilling takes the first pitch over for a strike it's one and one on Schill he sacrificed his first time up and then lined hard to the second baseman Barbary in fact didn't Pete sit one of the playoff games oh yeah that was a big controversy when Tony Perez played Swing and a miss. Rob Nen on in his second inning of work. Nen retired the Phillies in order in the fifth inning. It's another guy that they think has some potential. Real hard thrower. Guy that was in the Rangers organization, well thought of for a while. And Schilling strikes out. Strikeout number two for Nen. And that will bring up the top of the order. Lenny Dykstra, a perfect night for Dude. He has singled, walked twice, and scored a run. Phillies came out swinging tonight. Charlie Huff. And Dykstra got it all going as he normally does. Lenny led off the game with a base hit. He scored his run in the second inning. You know, it looked like it might be uh, a long night for the Phillies when Dykstra was uh, caught off third base on a ball that John Cruck hit. Now, we don't know who messed up as far as the sign went, but, you know, that play was uh, one where. Dykstra was leaving third, then Morandini should have definitely been going to third. Yeah, that play was, uh, there was something wrong with it from the beginning, you could tell. I mean, you can get away with it against the Florida Marlins, but those are the things you don't want to do down the stretch, the things that are going to help you to beat yourself or give the team a little bit of, uh, give the other team a little bit of an edge. No balls and two strikes on Lenny's facing Rob Nen for the first time. There's a breaking ball. Phillies. Had not have not seen this guy before. Here is Lenny Dyser at 136. The numbers put up by Chuck Klein, the Hall of Famer. Doesn't look like he'll get the record. Now, what is that? 1930? Is that a called? It's not modern day baseball, is it? Yeah. Is From 1900 on, I think they call it, don't they? I don't know, Larry. <laughs> I think it's I personally think it's time for a new era beginning when now let's start right now or go back to 1990 and start the game has changed so much it has you're not going to see guys that play uh, as long as guys have in the past they're not going to have those same type of stats so when you start to think of uh, Hall of Fame guys you're not going to qualify them on statistics I don't think anybody's going to come along that does it. So let's call it a new era starting from 1990 and have different standards. You're so thought provoking tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No balls in the strike to Mickey Morandini. That's the response I got when uh, I brought it up with my son. <laughs> he said, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, Dad, you want me to take the trash out? <laughs> uh, you know, that's what you got to do, run all these thoughts by your family before you go out and uh, embarrass yourself in public. Yeah, because they'll tell you what they're what they're thinking. That's for sure. There's Gary Carter with Jay Randolph, great broadcaster, and uh, Gary Carter should be in the Hall of Fame someday. They do the Florida games. Yeah, those catchers, boy, see him waving his hands and stuff. Kid, what a great career Gary Carter had. Well, I mean, tremendous hitter. One of his idols. I remember when he first came up. One of his idols, his idol, was Pete Rose, and what he used to do was take. If he got a walk, he flew down to first base. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> In the Maddox era. <laughs> See, my but known forever now as the ME. Grounded weekly to second. Good play by Barbary. Flips the first, and that'll got him. And Gary, we will see you in the final game on Wednesday night. Thank you. All right. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. We're through 6 6 1 Pills. What if someone were to design a car about the size of a Ford Taurus outside, but with more room for people than Taurus or Toyota Camry inside? Someone did. What if someone were to design a car with safety features Taurus and Camry don't give you, like both driver and passenger side airbags standard, or an available integrated child safety seat? Someone did. 
And what if a prestigious magazine were to name this car Automobile of the Year? One of them did. Dodge Intrepid. This changes everything. What does it take to be a mountain man, man? Do you need a big horse? Do you need a deep tan? Do you have to have a saddle? Do you have to have a gear? Well, the simple truth is you just gotta have the beer. Bush beer. An easy drinking bush light. Have you got what it takes to be a mountain man? What does it take to live a mountain man's life? Get smooth bush beer is a drinking bush light. Every once in a while, it's a good idea to shake things up a bit. Turn over a new leaf. Put a different spin on things. Get a different perspective. And ultimately, make a change. At PRISM, that time has come. A new look. A new sound. A new attitude. A new PRISM. Coming your way October 1st. I go Larry Anderson and Mitch Williams to the bullpen. Hmm. That guy wearing the Anderson shirt, his left arm's kind of dangling funny, isn't it? <laughs> the, he didn't fool the fans, though. They booed no, Mitch all the yeah, way out. They did, did. Yeah, they, they were all over him. him. They got him. And now he takes off his shirt and gives Andy back his shirt, and there's 99. That was quite a weekend for Mitchell. <laughs> Hey, you gotta have some fun in this game. Well, why not? Darrell Whitmore, the batter, he's a number seven hitter. Walt Weiss will follow, and then a pinch hitter for Rob Nen as two pitchers are up in the Florida bullpen. Whitmore beats a foul wickedly in the seats. Rich Rodriguez is the left-hander, and the right-hander is a guy named John Johnstone, JJ. Yeah, you know, I had a lot of people call me and say, hey, I didn't know you were back in the big leagues, you know, pitching again. I said, what? He used to be in the Mets organization, and they was drafted from the, the Mets by the Marlins. So. Quite a coincidence, same name. You're a John, right? I certainly am. That's, we had three Johns in our family. My dad was Jack. They called me Jay. Fastball ran back over the plate to Whitmore. One ball and two strikes to the left-handed batter. There's another one, and he can't believe that. That one looked like it was inside. Ties his career high in strikeouts for the fifth time with nine. Two straight times now, Kurt Schilling has struck out nine batters. Well, the Phillies needed a well pitched game tonight. They needed somebody to come out and just shut the door on the opposition, and they're getting that tonight from Kurt Schilling. Nine strikeouts. Whitmore just shakes his head. Here's Walter Weiss. He's two for two tonight. Deck is Matias Carillo. <laughs> we'll get him up in a minute. And Mickey Morandini throws out Walt Weiss, and that will bring up the pinch hitter Carillo, who is a left handed batter. Matias Carillo is from Mexico, makes his home now in Guamas, Guaymas, Mexico. Played last year and the year before for the Mexico City Tigers. Had a cup of coffee with the Brewers in 1991 when he had three at bats and was 0 for 3. Florida purchases contract September 1st of this year. And you saw the numbers on him. He has 10 major league hits now and three runs batted in. Well, I can tell you that the Marlins and the management of the Marlins are trying to get a look at as many players as they can in the month of September. So that when they go back to spring training next year, they'll have a pretty good idea as we look at Renee Lashner of what they have to do. One big thing, obviously, they got to solidify the defense a little bit, keep them from making those mistakes. And also, they got to figure out a way to get some more runs on that scoreboard. Strike three called. Kurt Schilling has a career high 10 strikeouts as he strikes out the pinch hitter, Carrillo. In the inning, no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. Seventh inning stretch time coming up. Did you know Texaco put System 3 in every grade of gasoline? System 3 gets high marks in every grade, which is a lot better than I ever did. My dad says Texaco put System 3 in every grade. I'm in the fourth grade. That's why I always fill up with System 3. <laughs> what do I look like? Don't say it. 
when it comes to performance in cars both new and old. With System 3, I can get great performance from Beacon Hill to Beverly Hills. Count on every grade of Texaco System 3. Don't try it with any other gasoline. I wouldn't. Who we'll asked you? Making it to the pros takes a certain level of excellence. The experience to get the job done right and a reputation for quality. Like Gates Hoses from CarQuest, today's engines are putting added strain on hoses. If you haven't changed hoses lately, have it done now before they go and insist on Gates. So for the best possible performance, install what the pros install. CarQuest. Welcome to the pros. Now appearing, a well-equipped Dodge Shadow for around $10,000. Spirit, the lowest-priced six-passenger car out there, around $12,100. Or own a caravan, including air at no extra charge, for under $15,100. Hi, I'm Dick Vermeil with Blue Cross Blue Shield Health Kit. When is it safe to be in the sun? Exposure to the sun is more dangerous when your shadow is shorter than your height. It is best to avoid the noonday sun. Wearing a hat protects areas of normally high exposure and cancer risk. There's a new pitcher, John Johnstone, 24 years old from Never Liverpool, New York, 6'3, 195. There are his numbers. Johnstone taken out of the Mets organization. Last year he pitched at Binghamton. He was seven and seven. Fastball, curveball, slider. He's really up to try and gain some experience. His fastball sinks it a little bit. His curveball has a fairly good break on it. A lot of times they, they say that he tries to aim it. He just lacks really the experience to become a better pitcher. So that's why Marcel Latchman has him up here the last month of the season to give him some time against big league pitching. John Crook will lead it off for the Phillies as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. There's Kurt Schilling. Phillies lead it here six to one. Six runs on nine hits as a conference takes place on the mound. Crook two for three tonight waiting to hit. And partner as we go to the seventh inning Schilling has just done a masterful job of shutting down the opposition and the Philly hitters have responded and good night all the way around as we look again at dirty Kurt Schilling chatting with Todd Pratt had a couple of shaky innings but Schill's been able to pitch out of him for the most part and has had really good stuff tonight getting those 10 strikeouts a career high but it was only appropriate that you should put this gentleman in the game. Yes, a couple of times people have mistaken him for me, including the Major League Baseball Players Insurance Program. <laughs> they didn't send me a bill for six months, figured I was back in the big leagues. Of course, what made it worse was that when I did get the new bill, it was a nine-month bill instead of a three-month bill. So, but uh, John Johnstone. There's a nice sign out there on the upper deck. Out there in right field. John Crook takes a pitch over for a strike and it's two and one on John Crook tonight is two for three with a couple of singles and two runs batted in Crook has also scored two runs. John Stone six three one hundred ninety five pounder. Crook hits it to left field and deep back goes Conine still going back at the wall it's gone a home run John Crook. An opposite field home run for Crook is 14th of the year and the Phillies lead it seven to one on Crook's over. Well, it's another $200 for the Philadelphia Child Guidance Clinic, number 152 on the year for the Phillies. And the Child Guidance Center, again, compliments of Cento, gets another $200. A pitch out over the plate. Johnstone goes with the fastball, and Crook and the Phillies make a statement here tonight for all the world in the Montreal Expos to see that just because they lost two of three in Montreal, it's a long way from being over. Holland's a batter and Johnstone bounces one up there. Dave tonight has walked, doubled in a couple, and grounded out. There are the totals on the ball game. We're in the bottom of the seventh. First of three with the Florida Ball Club. No scoreboard watching tonight because Montreal is not playing. Tomorrow night they will face John Smoltz and the Expos are going to pitch Ken Hill. 
piece of the wall came down. I saw a piece of yellow land there on the warning track when he banged into him. That's what it was. Great job by the ground crew of the Phillies, the city of Philadelphia, in changing this place from football. They had a great game with the Redskins here yesterday. And then back to a baseball configuration tonight. Full conversion, and they did a terrific job. The weather cooperated. They didn't have to worry about rain, which was a break for them. You said it's not supposed to, we're not supposed to have any precipitation until around midnight tonight. You said that ground crew started after the game, the Eagles game yesterday, here at 6 o'clock this morning. Got it ready, and it looks perfect. Three balls and one strike on Dave Hollins. And Hollins takes it over strike two. See what happens when Conine hits the wall out here. The ball bounces into the bullpen. And a piece of the uh, wall came down, <laughs> hit Conine on the shoulder. He's wondering, what was that? Ball four. So Johnstone has yet to retire a batter. As Cruck greets him with a homer. And Dave Hollins walks and Darren Dalton will bat 0 for 3, but he was robbed his last time up on a great play by Barbary and it took two RBIs away from Dalton. The scouting report on Johnstone says he's had control problems. To take some pitches, make him throw strikes, and of course Truck got a pitch that he liked, and Hollins a master at taking strikes. West Chamberlain there on the Phillies bench. John Stone was recalled from Edmonton on September 2nd. He is third in the PCL with 126 strikeouts out there on the Coast League. And they moved him to the bullpen. He started pitching pretty well for them, not so well as a starter. One ball, no strikes to Dalton. Over for a strike, one and one to Dutch. On deck is Jim Eisenreich and Milt Thompson to follow. Phillies seven. Marlins won here in the seventh inning. You might have to check the family tree on this guy, you know? Maybe there was some hanky panky going around a long time ago. Breaking ball, pretty good one there. Yes, he's got a good one. One and two. Like I said, the scouts have said his problem is inexperience and the fact that he's got a control factor problem where he'll make a great pitch one time and then he, it might take two or three other pitches to get that same location back in. One ball, two strikes on Dalton. Nobody out here in the seventh inning fills with a run in on Crux Homer. And Dalton tires are waiting and steps out. Johnstone was selected by the Marlins with their third pick in the second round of the expansion draft, number 31 overall for Florida. Dalton to left field, hit pretty well, but Conine is right there. Hit that one off the end of the bat. There's still plenty of time to reserve a roster spot for the Phillies Dream Week this winter in Clearwater, Florida, but you got to act soon. First week already sold out. The number is 215 938 1200. That's for a magical week of baseball and fun in the sun away from the snow. So for full de details, call 938 1200. There's a number on your screen. It's a lot of fun, and believe me, when you're down there in the fun in the sun, you forget all these snow problems up here. Eisenreich one for three tonight, a two run single in the first inning, and really loosen everything up. I got a nice letter here speaking mm -hmm. of Dream Week from the team that Greg Luzinski, Terry Harmon, and I coached back in 1990 called the Emeralds. There's Brad Brink getting a little work into the bullpen. Tied for first, lost in the finals to Boa's team, one to nothing on a cheap late inning run. It says. A cheap late inning run. I never heard of a cheap late inning run. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. I remember you. We had a lot of fun, and Larry Ball was. His normal irritating self to the opposition no, down there, and his team not loved him. Larry, <laughs> sweet, lovable Larry, yeah, right. the little Tasmanian devil, as we used to call him when we played. You want to go to Dream Week? You'll meet him, <laughs> for better or for worse. The ball and two strikes now. To Eisenreich, his natal makes a good play. He's had a lot of balls in the dirt tonight that he's handled well. You know, that's for the price of admission. It's worth going down just to spend a week, a week with Larry Boa down there in the sun. I get the chance to spend two with him. Lucky you. <laughs> Eisenreich, fly ball, shallow left field. Conine coming in. And Jeff Conine makes his second play of the inning. Two outs. Hollins goes back to first base. And Milt Thompson will bat one for three. You know, Conine, after moving from first base to the outfield, has just done a marvelous job. He ranks third among 
nationally got those with a 996 fielding percentage one air and 240 some chances. Another good block by Nadal. Collins of course not going anywhere with the Phillies having a six run lead I and mean, he would run at the ball were to bounce away he wouldn't try and steal a base. And there's the bullpen with Kevin Foster the young right hander in the front part of your screen there. And Brad Brink throwing in the bullpen. They both saw action in the game and against Houston here right before the Phillies went on that road trip to New York and Montreal. Phillies here for three with the Florida Marlins and then those Atlanta Braves coming in Friday Saturday and Sunday. How about Tom Glavin and Tommy Green on Friday. Be a game Just to watch a him. couple of Tom's going at it. Tom Glavin a 20 game winner. And Tommy Green will be someday. Three balls and no strikes. You know you, you got to. Take some serious consideration looking at Tom Glavin. Possibly a Greg Maddox and a Tommy Green at this year's Cy Young Award. They should all get votes. Mm -hmm. And Milt Thompson takes a strike call. Three balls and one strike. Fanatic working the crowd down the first baseline on top of the Phil's dugout. Tommy Green checking him out. Here's the pitch to Milt. Fouled it back. Full you count. Can, you can bet that Dave Raymond, a la the Fanatic, is glad that the cool weather is upon us. It's being in that well fitting costume that he wears, it gets mighty warm in there during those summer days. Players are happy too. It was a hot summer here in Philadelphia. There goes Hollins on the 3 2 count. Milk gets a base hit to left. Here comes Hollins for third. Here's Conine's throw. The human torpedo is safe. <laughs> what a base run. I'm telling you. You know, that's a hustle play. And normally most players don't take a chance on that. The, what you don't want to happen is to get thrown out at third with two outs. And that throw had it been on the money probably would have got Hollins. But the pitch is a fastball up in the strike zone. Thompson goes with it. There's a great piece of hitting. Conine comes in. But watch the throw just a little bit high. And Hollins, as you said, just diving in head first under the tag. Great hustle. Yeah, it's a play you have to make. Mm -hmm. He's just so aggressive. And he just keeps running the bases with his reckless abandon. And now Stocker the batter. Kevin is one for three tonight with a run score. And he takes it on the outside corner for a strike. Phillies have yet to score. Now they have scored, excuse me, off the bullpen. They got nothing off Lewis, nothing off Men in four innings. And now a run off Johnstone here in the seventh with a chance for more. Runners at the corners and two outs. Hollins at third and Milt Thompson at first base with his second hit of the ball game. Pretty good breaking ball there. One and two. Yeah, if he can only use it with some consistency, he might be okay. I said. That's the scout reports on him, the fact that he doesn't have that consistent with the location of his breaking ball or his fastball. Kevin Stocker right at the 350 mark. Whoa. That hit the camera? That hit the camera. My goodness. That's a $40,000 unit, folks, and that hit right off the camera. Fanatic that scared him a little bit. Yes, sir. You look at right there. I don't know where, where it hit on it. But Marty Miller's down there. That's the Fanavision camera. Oh, there's Marty. That might have gotten his viewfinder up there. <laughs> <laughs> See if there's a little indentation on the side. <laughs> one and two. And Stocker got a little out front on that one. And he strikes him out on a pitch away. So Stocker out on strikes. Phillies pick up a run in the inning on John Crux Homer. Two hits, no errors, and they leave two men on base. Through seven, seven one fills. Mountain man survival skills. The basics. A true mountain man must have a keen sense of direction, a certain physical dexterity, and a talent for surviving the most unforgiving climates.
Of course, nothing is more key to a mountain man's survival than plenty of smooth bush beer and easy drinking bush life. So, head for the mountains and learn how the mountain man survives even the most grueling conditions. Those who expect more from a credit card must not settle for less. First, eliminate cards charging the highest rates or not offering fixed or variable rate options. Demand worldwide acceptance, 24-hour customer service and gold card benefits. And insist upon price assurance, purchase protection, extended warranties and satisfaction guarantee. So what remains? The Grand Elite Visa Gold Card from Chemical Bank. If you possess one, do use it. If not, apply now. You'll get a great look in Phillies poster free compliments of Acme, plus plenty of fun surprises when the Phillies play the Braves on Fan Appreciation Day, Sunday, September 26th at 1.35. Reserve your tickets now. Call 463-1000. And tonight's summary there, you see it. Phillies scored early and often the night off. Charlie Huff, two in the first on a big hit by Eisenreich, added four more. And then they just picked up another run on John Crux homer. Kurt Schilling, seven strong innings. He's labored in a couple of them, but still has ten strikeouts. Crux a big night, and Jim Eisenreich. Hard to explain how big that hit was the way it got everybody going in that first inning with two outs. Jim. Turned the whole game around because then it could have switched the momentum over on the Marlins side. Who knows what might have happened. Big two out hit as we see Kim Batiste coming in in replace of Dave Hollins at third base. Batiste has done that a lot regularly. Jim for goes getting him some time in and by the way he's just done a great job in doing it. Kurt Schilling with 221 of the third innings now as he continues to pile up the innings much as he did last year. And the top of the order comes up. Chuck Carr will lead it off. Schilling at 111 pitches at this point. Carr has struck out singled and walked and a breaking ball on the outside corner for a strike. Schilling has walked two to go along with his career high 10 strikeouts. Another breaking ball. This one's low. It'll be Carr, Barbary, Conine. First three hitters in the lineup as we go to the eighth inning. Phillies leading at 7 to 1. Carr fork ball. Yeah, looks something different. Carr really took a lot off that. Takes kind of a page out of the Brett Butler book of hitting. On the year, he's had 16 bunt hits. You have to play him up. That's a very weak swing on that particular pitch. Morandini has to charge it because Carr can fly and he gets it. And you can't lay back on a high hopper either at short or second. You've got to charge and throw on the run. As you can see, Chuck Carr with great speed leads the National League in stolen bases. So more nearly quickly got the ball over there. This guy runs further past first base than any player I've ever seen. I mean, he was down near the end of the tarp then. Chuck uh, Carr will put on a little show. Brett Barbary, the batter, the switch hitting second baseman. He is 0 for 2 tonight, but he has knocked in the Marlins one run with a bases loaded fielder's choice. Struck out and walked also. And the pitch is down low. One ball and one strike on him. Maddock having a little fun behind home plate with the crowd and not had the announced attendance as of yet. Barbary Jam fouls it off left side and out of play. I give you a few figures on that partner. Phillies only need coming into tonight 130,057 more fans to reach the three million mark. So what a year the Phillies have had in attendance wise their best year ever and they will surely break that three million mark very shortly. Two balls and two strikes as a fanatic is fooling around down there in the Phillies wide section. <laughs> <laughs> Phillies a million more fans over last year. Wow. Base hit Brett Barbary. Dykstra fields it on a couple of hops. That's hit number seven. All singles. Yeah, and it should be huge crowds here this weekend when Atlanta comes to town. Oh, I would think uh, a couple of 45,000 or so. What do you think, huh? And maybe 50 on yeah. Sunday on Fan mm -hmm. Appreciation Day. However, the Phillies have three games to play with these Florida Marlins that are very important games for them. Jeff Conine, the batter, 0 for 3.
One ball, no strikes. Philly, whoops, that ball got away from Dalton, but nobody's going. Philly's bullpen really beleaguered over the weekend. I mean, they used a lot of pitchers and they pitched quite a bit. So you see, they're just kind of standing around out there. And even though Schilling's thrown a lot of pitches tonight, I think Fergosi would really like Schilling to try and get through this one if at all possible. He won't overextend him, but he would like not to have to get somebody up in the pen. Two balls and no strikes. Konai pops it up, shallow right field. Here comes Eisenreich in an easy play for Jim. Two outs. Nice pitch by Schilling. Conine has had a pretty good year so far. And also sixth in the Nash League in multi-game hits. The Phillies have just shut him down as we see the total pitches thrown tonight by Kurt Schilling. And Arresta is distraught at the batter. He's had a long night. Three punch outs. They're not holding the runner on at first. And Kruk, that's a fair ball. Schilling is there. He flips it to him, and they get Destrade on one pitch in the eighth inning. No runs a hit. No errors. One left. We're heading to the bottom of the eighth inning, and the Phillies lead it 7 to 1. Don't you have anything to fit me? No offense, Mr. Jones, but you are a little on the small side. I need more choices. Harry, give me those genuine yellow pages. Look, choices. Italian, Greek, Chinese. You want more? Those are restaurants. That's right. You put some meat on those bones and come back and see us. Nine out of ten use it. Mr. Matterhorn. The genuine Bella Pennsylvania yellow pages from Bell Atlantic. Are you losing weight? Yeah, you're right, Judd. There's no beach traffic. Easy. I went out. There's a Coke machine. Man, so hot. You certainly are. Hot as in sweaty. Do you? Okay, so crank on the AC. Air conditioning is for the week, like yourself. I'm sticking to the seat, like yourself. That Please. dog is Please. moving faster than we are. All you guys ever do is complain. Your shoes are pretty. Could someone please fan me? No. Coca-Cola, anyone? Yeah. Right. Thank That's you, awesome. Alan, for serving a purpose in my life for the first time. Well, You're very welcome. <laughs> Ryback is an ex seal <laughs> Expert in martial arts. Explosives. Stand back! Weapons and tactics. I also cook. The Nimitz is tracking two tomahawks just launched from the Missouri. Where are they headed? Honolulu. Happy trails. Steven Seagal. I know you, don't I? Tommy Lee Jones. Been a long time. Under siege. Well, we were just talking about Fan Appreciation Day, and it is on Sunday when the Braves come to town at 1.35. What a day to say thanks for the spectacular support of the Phillies fans this year. There'll be all the comp customary prizes and surprises. Plus, all fans receive a great-looking poster to commemorate this memorable season. Compliments of Acme. Make your plans to come on out and say goodbye to the regular season. Order your tickets by phone. Call 463-1000. Or you can stop by the Center City Ticket Office. Mellon PSFS Broad Chestnut Street. Fan Appreciation Day, Sunday, September 26th, with the Braves at 1.35. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Phillies as intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form or otherwise used without the express written consent of the Phillies as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning with Schilling leading it off. And Schilling swings through a pitch from Johnstone and looked out at him. How could I miss that? <laughs> and as we mentioned, uh, it looks like they want Schilling to pitch the nine innings tonight because he is batting here. What an overshift they have on him. Get a shot of where Carr and, and uh, Whitmore are. Carr is way over in right center, and Whitmore is very shallow in right. Here's the 1 1 to Schilling. Check out this defense. I guess they're saying in the statement that Schilling's not a very good hitter, huh? They're saying he's not going to pull it. <laughs> 1 and 2 to him. And Schill swings and misses. Lori Bat is hitting. He's pitching great again tonight. Yeah, Chris Schilling on his way to his seventh straight win. Yeah. And the crowd gives him a nice hand as he heads back to the dugout. Strikeout number two for John Johnstone. But some guys at least like to hit their weight. You know what I mean? And Schilling a little bit under his weight now. Yeah. Hey, speaking of fan appreciation, I forgot to bring this up last time, partner. This pitch is called a strike. You know all those people that sent all those... Um, Great uh, excuses in for the business person special that I asked. Well, I tell you what, I, I went through about 500 of them. I did. 
and there were some real beauties. This pitch is outside, and the one that I finally came up with, which was probably the best, and you people, I guess you're going to have to agree because it was so close. But the one I came up with was probably the least likely to be checked out. Was a, a person wrote me saying that he told his boss he had to go to the IRS for an audit, and that's the reason why he couldn't be in the work, and they were audit him, and that way he was able to sneak out to the business person special. Room. Hey, who's going to argue with that? I know I wouldn't call the IRS to check up on it, so that's a great sympathy ploy. So that 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 was the one that I finally determined had the validity to to be used at the office, and that person will get some tickets. Extra hits it well to left. The Conan is right there, and the left fielder coast under it, grabs it, and that's a second out here in the eighth inning. And there's no truth to the rumor that the person that wrote that was Al Capone. Right, so anyway, we'll uh, we'll be in touch with that person. But I thank you all for writing in. We had so many responses, and there were so many good ones. I can't believe it today. I wish I could just read some of them on the air. It was fabulous. Vicky Morandini, two for four tonight, swings and misses. To broken down cars, to buying cemetery plots, to taking the boss out for lunch, and you know all kinds of. Things. We had five of them this year. They were well attended, a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Seen the schedule for next year, and I think there'll be at least that many. One ball, one strike on Morandini with two outs. John Kruk, a hot hitter tonight, is on deck. Mickey hits it to deep left center. This is going to get over Conine's head and bounce off the wall on one hop. And Mickey has a stand up double. Morandini with a three hit ball game and his 17th double of the year. Dini getting a fastball to his liking. He's had problems with the bat lately, hitting a lot of fly balls. Jim Fergosi, Dennis Minky trying to get Morandini to hit the ball back on the ground. He doesn't have the power to drive the ball out of the ballpark. But Morandini got into that one. Conine playing him way too shallow. He picks up his Chris Sitter's 17th double. And John Crook on a three hit night has knocked in three runs and he's hit a home run his 14th of the year. Truck began the night at 313 and raises his average to 316. It doesn't move a whole lot this time of the year when you have no. a lot of at bats, and John has 503 of them. And the first pitch from John Stone is a breaking ball over. No balls and one strike on Cruck. Sounds so weird to hear you say that. Yeah. I used to say that a lot. You were out there. No relation, by the way, folks. No relation. No balls and one strike. Phillies lead at 7 1. Kim Batiste is on deck. He's in the lineup now after Dave Hollins left. Hollins had a good night. That's hit towards left center. Carr got a great jump on it though and ran it down. Chuck Clark had really covered some ground in that outfield. No runs, a hit, no errors, and one man left on base. Heading to the ninth. It's up to Kurt Schilling. Did you know Texaco put System 3 in every grade of gasoline? System 3 gets high marks in every grade, which is a lot better than I ever did. My dad says Texaco put System 3 in every grade. I'm in the fourth grade. Of course! That's why I always fill up with System 3. <laughs> what do I look like? Don't say it. Visit your Texaco station. I can get the tires rotated, the car lubed, and still get home in time for the game. Mow the lawn. For unbeatable System 3 gasolines and so much more. Mow the lawn. Mow the lawn. The legendary Notre Dame Fighting Irish take on the scrappy Navy midshipmen in a fall football classic. Saturday, October 30th, 1210 at Veterans Stadium. Get tickets at Ticketmaster, the Phillies box office, or call 463-1000 to order tickets in advance. Notre Dame Navy, Saturday, October 30th. Sponsored in part by the Philadelphia Inquirer, Herman's World of Sporting Goods, Super Pretzel, Soft Pretzels, and WOGL. Color, excitement, fun, go! The other day, these guys came to me and said, Kirby, how'd you like to be in a cross-training commercial for Nike? You wear the shoes, right? We could come film your workout. So I said to them, let me get this straight. You want to make a three-hour commercial? And a 
let's take a look at the Major League scoreboard. Montreal not playing tonight. See San Diego beating Colorado. Pittsburgh over New York. That shutout by Paul Wagner. They're in the eighth. Los Angeles over Cincinnati. Cubs and Cardinals are tied. And San Francisco, they've been playing well again. They're winning two to one. To the American League quickly, where Detroit beat Milwaukee. Joe Baber earned his first save of the year for Detroit. And Cleveland over Baltimore. That would really hurt the Indians. Are the Orioles. The big blow is a two-run Randy Milligan double. The other games later on tonight out on the coast. Alex Arias leads it off. Bob Nadel and then Daryl Whitmore. And Schilling's first pitch is over for a strike. Kurt Schilling trying to retire Florida here in the ninth inning so the Delaware Valley can take a deep breath for at least one more day and not start worrying again until tomorrow night. Fouled out of play into the upper deck. Well, one of the big things that has helped Schilling Chris in this game tonight is the fact that he has retired the first batter in seven of the eight innings he's pitched now. If you can get that leadoff guy, that makes it a heck of a lot easier, not only on yourself, but on the defense. 0 2 outside. He had a shaky third and a shaky oh. fifth. Other than that, he's really been in command. Schill has walked two and struck out 10, a career high. And of course, a great play by Hollins to start off the third really helped him in that inning. Line drive right at Krupp, one out. Well, eight of nine leadoff batters he's retired in this game. Schilling up among the league leaders in complete games coming into this one. As Arias hits the line drive to first, the leader is Greg Maddox of Atlanta with eight, and then Tommy Green, Terry Mulholland, Doug Graybeck, Doc Gooden have seven. Schilling was six, so this would be number seven to tie him with three of his teammates for second in the league. Behind Greg Maddox. And the Phillies probably will not see. It looks like Smoltz, Avery, and Maddox will pitch against the Expos, and the Phillies will get Glavin, Merker, and then Smoltz. Stay tuned. We'll see. Nadal fouls it off. No balls and two strikes. He is 0 for 3. The on deck batter, Daryl Whitmore, a left handed hitter. One out in the ninth inning. Phillies 7, the Marlins 1. Of course, as you mentioned, the Phillies have topped the National League in complete games. This will be, if, if Schilling gets it, the 24th. That tops the National League. Closest team to the Phillies is Atlanta with 18. Fouled out of play right side. Phillies after the night, 12 games left to play. Five of them here at the Vets, seven on the road. That fan grabs the ball. And some of the other fans thought maybe a youngster should have it. <laughs> No balls and two strikes. Breaking ball and a beauty. Strike three call on the outside corner. Nato can't believe it. That's number 11 for Schilling. Nato did not like the call, but look at the pitch right where the corner is. It was a downer curve type ball. And you can see he gave up on it. Speaking of Nadal and the ball right on the outside corner. What a pitch. 31,454 tickets sold for this one tonight. A lot of people still here on their feet. The Schilling fires a fastball by Darrell Whitmore, who is one for three. That's what he's accomplished thus far, looking for his seventh complete game. Gave up a single round of the fifth inning. Here we go, 0 and 1. High fastball. One ball, one strike on Whitmore. Back at you tomorrow night at 7.30 on PHL 17 and then on Wednesday on Prism. Tim Fergosi, calm in the eye of the storm at all times. I don't think the players don't notice that. Players will always look to their manager on how to react. And he stays calm and they try to stay calm. One two swing and a weak ground ball to second. Morandini to Krupp. Take a deep breath everybody. The magic number is nine. Great job by Kurt Schilling tonight as he puts the Florida Marlins away by a score of seven to one and a lot of happy teammates. Kurt Schilling with a career high 15th win tonight. As he is now 15 and 6, and he hasn't lost since July the 11th. Seven straight for Schill. There's your final, and we'll be back with more after this. 
Pepperoni and onions on this pizza. I can't taste them. I can't even see them. They're just got small. Small. Small? How small? Very small. Very small? Very, very small. That small? Infinitely small. Want big toppings? Really big? Try the new chunky style pizza from Pizza Hut. It's got big chunks of meat and vegetables for taste you can actually see. Hey, I don't believe it. I see one. Where? Yeah. Hey, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> For taste you can see, it's the new Chunky Style Pizza from Pizza Hut. Now get five great tasting breadsticks delivered for just $1.49. It was for immigrants and their children and their dreams. It was for families. For new beginnings. And today, there's still just one reason why we always do our best. It's for you. Mellon PSFS. Hoover! What's wagon? Big four again. Usual number. Straight. And box of two. 50 cents each way. The Pennsylvania Lottery's Big Four the game. This is a kid teaching old dog new tricks. Don't forget to play both ways every day. You might be the lucky dog who wins. This house is you, Boomer. And the owners are anxious to sell. You'll get a great look in Phillies poster free compliments of Acme, plus plenty of fun surprises when the Phillies play the Braves on Fan Appreciation Day, Sunday, September 26th at 1.35. Reserve your tickets now. Call 463-1000. And here we are back at Veterans Stadium. The first inning, a big hit by Jim Eisenreich. Bases loaded, two outs. It looked like Charlie Huff was going to get out of it, but Old Reliable comes through. Jim Eisenreich has had so many big moments for the Phillies this year. And another one right there. He got the Phillies off and winging two to nothing. You see there, they added four in the second. A John Cruck home run in the seventh inning. Schilling giving up just the one hit on an infield out in the fifth. And they win it by a score of 7-1. to one. A career-high 11 strikeouts tonight for Kurt Schilling. And here is the career-high on the pinch hitter Carrillo as he throws a fastball on the outside corner. And he adds to that career-high with number 11, getting Bob Nadel on this breaking ball that the Florida catcher thought might have been a little bit outside. Schilling puts it in a perfect spot. And what a great job by Kurt Schilling tonight. And that's why he's our Texaco star of the game. The Phillies have a four and a half game lead. They win it tonight by a score of seven to one. And their magic number is now nine. We'll be back with a final word coming up right after this. is running out on Ford's factory authorized clearance. Save now on every number one selling Ford at your Quality Plus Ford dealer, including a double rebate on Ford Taurus, the number one selling car in America. Now get $1,000 cash back. Five of the top ten sellers. See your Quality Plus Ford dealer and get your best clearance deal today. Number one in America. Hurry, Ford's factory authorized clearance ends soon. It's often taken for granted. Yet it's as precious as the very air we breathe. It's called freedom. And it's what inspired Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield to create the new personal choice. A health plan that offers people the low costs of an HMO without asking them to give up what they value most. Their freedom. Personal choice. The health plan that controls costs, not people. Do Texaco Food Marts really have everything? Oh, they have gum, cheese, candy. Many reasons I come to Texaco. Chips, cereals, nice people. There are many, 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 many reasons. You want it, they got it. If they don't have it, you don't need it. Isn't that candy that pulls product out? Did I skip something? Visit your Texaco station and Food Mart for unbeatable System 3 gasoline. Pop comes here for System 3, and I come here for Pop. Right, Mom? And just about everything else. I'd recommend it to anybody, and I would too. sunshine this afternoon, high close to yesterday's 96 downtown.
And back here at Veterans Stadium, Kurt Schilling. Here's the final out of the ball game as he jams Whitmore and he hits this little weak ground ball to second. He's going to go over just in case they need him. They don't, and now he wants to shake somebody's hand. <laughs> Come on, somebody get here. <laughs> Schilling's going to find somebody sooner or later, and it turns out to be the Crocker, and Cruck had a big game for him. So what a job by the Phillies tonight, Jay. You know, they needed to come out and win one, and then they worry about tomorrow night, and they established the offense early. Eisenreich got them started, and what a job by Schilling. Well, Schilling did a great job, but like you said, Eisenreich was the key to this, and of course the base running by Hollins and the big night by Crux. So everybody kind of chipped in on a night that people were a little bit wondering how the Phillies would react after the tough losses in Montreal. But as you said, everybody can kind of sit back and <gasps> take that deep breath and relax and, uh, and come out and play here again tomorrow night. And Mike Williams will be on the mound for the Phillies tomorrow night. He'll be pitching in Terry Mulholland's spot, and the Phillies will need a good outing out of him. Yes, they will. Uh, they have to beat this club really three times in a row. They've got to make a statement. They're in their last home stand. Uh, the Atlanta Braves are coming in. They can't worry about the Braves. They've got two more games with, with the Marlins. They've got to beat the Marlins and then worry about what's happening after that. Okay, well, as we watch the insurance home run that John Cruck added on late in the ball game, and we'll be back right after this. Phillies baseball has been brought to you by Smooth Bush Beer and Easy Drink and Bush Light. Head for the Mountains of Bush. By Mellon PSFS, the official bank of the Phillies. By Bell of Pennsylvania Yellow Pages, no other book can match it, a Bell Atlantic company. By Texaco, save up to $5 by joining Texaco's Frequent Fueler Club. Visit your local participating Texaco location for all the details. Texaco, star of the American road. By Coca-Cola, Phillies baseball and Coca-Cola, always a hit, always Coca-Cola. By Cento Fine Italian Food, the company that says trust your family with our family. By your local Quality Plus Ford dealer. Now is the time to save big on the best-selling cars and trucks in America during your Ford dealer's mile year-end clearance. By the Pennsylvania Lottery, a participating advertiser in Phillies baseball. Lottery proceeds benefit older Pennsylvanians. And by Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield Personal Choice, the health plan that controls costs, not people. The thrill, the spirit, the excitement, the pride, the officially licensed team rings from Balfour. Each ring is crafted to the exacting standards of each league, and all are made in America of beautiful Balfour Celestrium for the look and feel of real gold or silver. Handcrafted by the same master jewelers who created league championship rings and trophies for decades. When you call to order, we'll send you a picture of your ring and a sizer to ensure your team ring fits perfectly. So call the number on your screen to order your team ring. There's no payment required now. You'll be billed just $19 prior to the shipment of your ring. Then, four more monthly payments of only $19 each. Enjoy years of showing your team pride right at hand. Call 1-800-438-6262, 1-800-438-6262. A fabulous Jules Jurgensen watch. Jules Jurgensen, creator of fine timepieces since 1740 and winner of 32 international awards. Jules Jurgensen, the ultimate fine watch. Well, we'll wrap up this tremendous season the Phillies have had here at Veteran Stadium and all over on Wednesday night when we bring you game number 46 on our PRISM schedule. It'll be the Phillies and the Florida Marlins. Larry's pregame show comes on at 7 o'clock, and then we'll have the game for you at 7.30. There's Kurt Schilling, who had a big game tonight. Once again, thanks a lot for watching. For Gary Maddox and Jay Johnstone, this is Chris Wheeler, the final, Philly 7th, and the Marlins won. We'll talk to you again on Wednesday night. Good night.